Oh, dear. So hang on a minute. That, that's 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 why she. Well, that's, is that good or bad? Bad. All right. Okay. You say okay. you it's not good that she needs to take them. Yeah. Right. Anyway, okay. Let, let's let's get off this one then. Anyway, anyway, well done, Claire, because you did put it on your Facebook. I just wanted to say well done. And, uh, I have anyway. better news anyway. Oh, go on. What is it? I'm leaving Asda. Oh. Oh. Hey, 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 you don't say it too loud. Just whisper it. Tell us why you're leaving. <laughs> I've got the letter. Yeah, go on. I'm, <laughs> as of the 3rd of May, yeah. I'm going to be a trainee dental nurse. Oh, nice one. Oh, lovely. Well done. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Yeah, well done. Oh, well, well done. Well done. Thank you. So, oh, no, that's brilliant. There, there is one downside with that, Claire. You, you're going to wish you never even mentioned it because we're all going to come to you for our teeth. <laughs> you can. You can. <laughs> no, there, there, there's, there's a woman whose name we shall not mention. She used to go to the uh, uh, Lantrip Major class called Ellen. Um, and everyone, because she was an ex, because, well, because she was a dentist, everyone used to go to her to have her teeth looked at. So, um, and uh, she, used to, she used to take people in a car park and, and um, examine their teeth. But, <laughs> and, but she, would, she would have a go at me for mentioning the fact that she was a dentist, but people <clears> would come in the room and say, you're my dentist. And she said, yeah, how's your teeth? And I'm thinking, I couldn't win. But OK, mm -hmm. Claire, I think, Claire, I think yeah. you've done your news this week, so that's fantastic. <laughs> right, who, who else have we got? Um, so what we're going to do, I do believe there's a thingy on you. If I, if I move the thingy, right, we can look at that. Right, so Margaret, look at you, babe. Hey, <laughs> Margaret, anything you want to tell us this week, darling? Um, no, can't think of anything at all, no. Right, right. Can you do me a favour, Margaret? Put your glasses on because everybody else has got glasses on and it makes you look good. Oh, um, these are my reading glasses. I, no, no, no. No, it no, you're spoiling it now. It's my OCD's gone nuts now. You should have all glasses on. Right, David, I need to be sense. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you look very learned with glasses on, don't you? Hey, yeah. and, oh, that's not good. Yeah, okay, <laughs> then. <laughs> Right, okay, I don't know what, look, uh, excuse what Anne just Where's said. Where's your glasses? Yeah, right, okay. you haven't got any glasses on, oh, after no, telling us. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute, I got my Vulcan ones here, yeah, thank you. So, um, <laughs> all right. Pat, anything you want to say? Yeah. Pat. Oh, nothing. Right, okay, right, I haven't insulted many people tonight. Um, Andy. Um, I've been on a dig today. Ooh. Oh, oh, tell us all about it while I'm doing my tea, go. Dig it, digging up bodies. <laughs> we've got no animal. No more. No, no, human bodies. Yeah, we got. We are up to number ten. So I'm actually having to go back again tomorrow. It was supposed to have been finished last week, but because so many keep turning up, we have to keep going and doing extra days. Where's but this, Andy? It's in Beetham, but um, oh. at that location. Yes, but oh. that must remain oh. anonymous. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, very interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Is that where well, you went not... last year and just found a little? Yes, that's oh, right. Yeah, God. yeah. No, uh, the metal detectorist not... in today as well. He found a uh, quite a few coins um, yeah. going back to to was it Charles the second and something some coin from. I'll get the details of that for next week. Yeah, but, yeah. So medieval pottery and things, but nothing actually stratified where the bones are. To you know, we got absolutely nothing to date them with at the moment. So which is a bit oh. annoying. Well, possibly because it's certainly a, um, a burial place because they are all in lines, they're spaced out, but they're they're kind of thrown in, oh, which is okay. kind of, yeah, like they were buried yeah. in a hurry. And, and also one that we took out, we had a guy today who's a specialist in, um, well, he, he, he's done quite a lot with burials. And he's saying that the one, the, the way it was lying, it had to have been put in quite a bit after it had died. Um, because it's it's in a it was in a funny shape, uh, the way it was lying. So, and he said that could only have happened post mortem. So, what age are you talking about in time? Well, we have really no idea other than about they're they're, they're old, so that they're, they're at least two hundred years old, probably four hundred or older. So, we think they might be plague. I was going to say, yeah. well, what, what, and, Andy, what, what about the possibility that they're Quaker if there's no artifacts with them and they're around that date? That the, they're what? Sorry? 
Uh, the, if, if, if they've gotten um, Quakers um, traditionally didn't uh, bury. Oh, that's with, a very interesting and, idea. And yeah. the other thing as well is um, Quaker burials were usually placed in areas which were out of the way. And if you're mentioning the dates of um, the your earliest um, um, coin dates uh, from about the 1660s, you're, you're talking possibly around when that sort of Quaker thing started. We to have quite cool. a lot of Quakers in, 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 in our area. I'm not yeah. too sure about yeah. either, but yeah, that's a possibility, yeah. Well, where, well you don't, don't give away the location, but is it really remote? No, it's not, actually. It's right, right in the middle of a little village. So right, um, right, what... Right. They're they're east west uh, roughly, right. but, but um, you know that doesn't mean much these days. No, but uh, what what puzzles us is they're very shallow and yeah. they're and they're like I said, uh, two of them are upside down, um, which tends to uh, tends us to think that they've been put in in a hurry. Mm. Uh, uh, which which burials. yeah, so yeah. I I I Quakers a nice idea, but I would have yeah, thought they would have been put in with more respect. So. Um, and and the, the 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 Quaker idea was to get them underground as quickly as possible, and that's it. That, that that's the Quaker moral. Okay, well that's a possibility then. In that case, uh, I I know there are Quakers in villages nearby. Um, yeah. I don't know about Quakers in that particular one, but that's a really interesting idea. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. No, no, I see. Yeah, that's that's. that's, that's I will one. mention it to the man himself tomorrow. The, the oh, don't tell me that man. Professional? No, no, not him. No, no, he's not there. All oh, right, thank God, yeah. thank God. No, this is a proper one. Claire's not sleeping with him. Claire's not sleeping with him, is she? No, don't think so. She gets on quite well with him, but there doesn't seem to be anything there. So. Oh, right. Let's, uh, anyway, let's not let's move on. Anyway, thanks, for Andy. We want an update yeah. next week. Yeah, we, we hopefully get some artifacts, get some dating. So it'll be good. Good, 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 good. Thank um, you. Now, um, anything you want to say, Claire? Because we know why have you got a hairdryer behind you, Claire? But you live in a work, you will work in a strange place. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lamp. All right. Um, so Claire's given us a news. Jess, anything Jess wants to say? Right, nothing at this minute. Jess is quiet. <laughs> and look at this technology. It's great, isn't it? I, I move you around the screen. I could do this all night. It's so brilliant. <laughs> right, who's next? Um, you know what? You know what? That cheeky smile of Anne, it almost looks as if you want to give her a big sloppy kiss on the lips there. Brilliant. <laughs> um, Anne, Anne, do you want to say anything? No, no. Thanks. Hmm. Right, let's just do the baldies. Um, Roger. No. And, and talk, talking about the boldest of the lot, Andy. Oh, not Andy. Oh, God, sorry. That oh. was a slip of... Oh, sorry, Andy. Pete? No, I've uh, had a word with Sandra. Sadly, she's not very well. Oh, she couldn't okay, come yeah. tonight. Can I, can, you, can, I just, uh, can I just share something with you, Pete? Uh, actually, this is more for... I'm just going to look at the messages a minute. Um, there are calls for mould cake to be brought back to Wales. Right, OK. Um, yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's another debate. Um, uh, uh, Peter, uh, I was looking at some old images the other day, and it was, um, and one of the people in that image is no longer with us. He's called John. Uh, you can share that with her. And uh, there's somebody else helping her of a bank. You know the, the 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 grinning type of way that Sandra struggled to get at banks with a mop of red hair. I saw that photograph the other day, and um, it's sort of uh, she might like it actually. Anyway, let's see what we can do. Okay. Right. So, um, OK, so we're going to we're going to get straight down to it now. Anyway, thanks. Thanks, for everybody, for turning up today. Drina's let us down. So I'm going to have a go her next week for letting us down because we're going to have a full class. Um, but anyway, oh, it's good to have a go at Drina. Right. Anyway, I've just got to try and work out where I am now. To, um, I'm just mucking around with the screen. Hang on. We're going to share straight away. <laughs> Um, and we're going to go to this, um, and we're going to go to the whiteboard. It's great. Um, so, is it the whiteboard showing, isn't it? Oh, no. Hang yeah. On. Yeah, it is. Right, so so what we do, and if I get the little doodah there, and I can go, um, there you go. It's nice, isn't it? Right, so if we get the little rubber in there, um, and we go like this. Good, 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 good. Hang on. Oh, there we go. Right. Anyway, I haven't done this whiteboard thing for a while, but what I would like to do first is is something that would be um, uh, very useful to Andy on this excavation. Um, well, Andy's probably knows all this, but what I wanted to do, I've, I've had this down for a while, 
Anyway, I would like to tell you what we're going to be doing after this. Uh, it's it's 7.50 anyway, and we're going to be looking at Brixham. And there's three caves that have been um, excavated at Brixham. Um, and strangely enough, this is so strange. I was having a conversation with Jessica. I decided to do the Brixham caves in in um, in, in um, Tor Bay. Um, I decided to do them about um, three or four weeks ago. Last week, last Wednesday, when I was when I first presented the Brixham stuff, because the schedule's all over the place now, uh, because you missed whatever. Um, um, it it was big news that one of the Brixham caves have been recently found, um, and it's great. It, it's almost as if I said to Jess, Jessica said to me, it's almost as if what we're doing is quite topical because. Everything that we do do in these classes seems to end up in the news somehow, and maybe some of the archaeologists in the establishments are sort of uh, looking to see what stuff we're doing. Anyway, I want to I want to look now at the word um, terminus postquem, uh, which is uh, if we write this on your um, terminus, um, and we're going to look at this terminus, uh, and the next word is post, uh, and we've got that there quem. That brings that this brings Andy back to the time that we used to, I used to write on the whiteboard. So we take, we're going to look at terminus postquem. Going to get rid of all that. Come on, off. Yeah, good. It's gone. Good. Uh, I want us to look at the word terminus postquem and also terminus antiquem. So basically, the term the word terminus terminus postquem and the terminus and the word terminus antiquem um, give us limits to when something is dated from okay it specifies a limit so in other words in a layer um, so if we draw this here hang on a minute hang on draw that that layer there so say say for example you've got a bit of pottery found there that bit of pottery right um the the earliest possible date that that can be from is the line at the bottom that's known as the terminus postquem and uh, I'm just going to ask Claire to do something. Claire, can you mute your uh, mic, please? Um, and the, this line above there is the um, latest possible date that an artifact is from. So that's basically the terminus antiquem. Um, so the terminus postquem post, post is the earliest possible time that that artifact dates from. And the terminus antiquem is the latest possible time that that artifact dates from. So I'm going to read this out. So um, Say, for example, if you found a basket um, with coins in it that were being placed into the basket, um, that the coins themselves um, would would date um, what we would call um, the latest possible date that the basket would date from based on the coins, which is, in other words, a, um, a terminus antiquem date. So hopefully we're getting this so far. Um, so a terminus postquem date is the earliest date the event may have happened. So it's the earliest date that soil um, dates from, right? Because that bit of pottery, right, must date after when, when that layer was created, right? It couldn't have dated from before that layer was created. It must have dated from when after that layer was created the event the stratigraphy the context whatever you want to call it um so in other words those two lines are the limit from when the layer is created an event may well have both a terminus quote post quem date which is the lowest line and a terminus antiquem date so in other words to make it easy um say this was the roman period right so um that line itself we know that the Roman period, the Roman era started in AD 43. So when you start finding artifacts from the Roman period in that layer, the earliest possible date that that dates from is 43 AD, right? And, and then that top date then is the latest possible date that the Roman, Roman era existed to. Those are the limits, the limits to which. Um, and... So what 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 we what we do find is this this is a technique that that definitely works in British archaeology. It's not a technique that would have worked in regards to layers that Flinders Petrie were working on. Um, in, for example, the Nakada Desert, where basically it's all sand and there, and and there's no layers, right? But you had dating evidence. That's that's different. 
So um, the layers themselves, so if you've got a document, for example, a document could be written about a certain time, any time after a terminus, um, terminus postquem date, right? So you can't have a document talking about something, um, um, you can't have a document, um, say for example, a document dates from 1600, that document from 1600 can't discuss something from 1601 because it was created in 1600. So, so in other words, um, the latest possible date that that document can refer to because it was written in 1600, um, the latest possible date is December um, 1601. So in other words, that is the terminus antiquem date. So I wanted to do that with you today because it's something that's been on my mind. Is that is that clear to all of you or isn't it before we move on? Yes. But I've, never, yes. I've never heard of antiquem or uh, postquem before. That's a new one on me. Yeah. I, I, I tell you what, I tell you what, Margaret, right? If Andy, if Andy offers to take you, right, yeah. to be them, right? Listen to this, have it written down, right? So Andy shows you a coin from King Charles from 1602. Yeah. Uh, no, 1602, 1662. Right, that'd be King James. Oh, uh, no, there'd still be Queen Elizabeth. Anyway, I get myself confused. So if the coin's got 1664 on it, 1664, yeah. that would be a coin in the reign of Charles II, right? Mm. Um, so if somebody hands you a coin and they say, oh, this, this coin itself is from um, 1664, and then you turn around and say, well, actually, um, that's the latest possible um, date that the layer um, comes from, right? So, because the, the coin dates that layer, so 16, uh, 1664. So, that, so, in other words, that's the terminus antiquem date. So, right? it's about to have been dug after that date, is that right? Yes, 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 right. yes, 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 that's right. That, might, that makes sense, folks? Yeah, mm -hmm. just never heard of it before. Have I got that right no. in everybody's eyes? Good. Yeah. So, so in other words, uh -oh. um, the other thing as well is, is that about that coin from 1664, right? The layer that it's found in, um, it, um, in other words, the layer um, um, can't be before 1664, right? So that's right. the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, got it? Yeah. 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 Anything anti must be after and anything post must be before. Exactly, which is a bit strange to be honest with you. Because um, I always think that anti comes before post, but it doesn't. Yeah. It comes post and anti. Well, yeah. oh, anti is after, post is before. Yeah, yeah that's but right. It don't sound right, though, does it? No, it doesn't. I know what you mean. Post is usually after. Yeah, exactly. But 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 it's the way it is. So so post. Yeah. So um, in other words, in anything, the Roman layer itself, because anything it, it, below the line is anti. No. Line. No, no, above the other line is post. Anti is later, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So post is anything, anything under the top later. line. Yeah. Anything <laughs> under the top line is anti. Yeah. Anything above the bottom line is post. Hang on. Yeah. Uh, Pete, Pete, we're trying to keep it simple, right? Post. Oh, that's why I'm trying to make it simple. No, you're not. No. You're making it more complicated. <laughs> now I've made it simple. You balls it up. <laughs> Sorry. Made it more simple for me. <clears throat> okay. Do you know what I'm going to do? I, I just want to make sure that I haven't made a mistake, right? So um, just work this through. So you've got a coin there, and it's from 1664, right? Yeah. So in other words, that coin could not have existed before 1664 because there's a date on it. Yeah. So the, the, the earliest... Um, so yeah. the earliest possible time that this layer can be, fr be from is 1664. Yeah. Right? Right. Yeah. So that's been deposited in there. Right. So in other words, that may have been deposited after, but it's very likely if it's a fresh coin, right, from 1664, um, that's probably the, the latest date as well, because it's it's a very fresh coin. If it's a very worn coin, um, there <laughs> might be a later terminus um, um, antiquem date. Does that make sense? Mm. As long as it's Good. prime... Prime soil, I know it's complicated a bit, yeah. but sometimes we've been caught up with redeposited yeah. um, soil from for banking, filling in for various uh, defences, stuff like that, farming. Right. Stuff like that. So that can, you've got to be damn sure you're in virgin soil or not, uh, something's being moved around a bit. 
So what what what? Uh, what what what? Uh, uh, this this is actually an easier way of explaining it. So if we got if we got that there, right, right. Yeah. So so basically, that there's the ditch, yeah, and that there's the bank. Over time, um, that line there, uh, all of that stuff there has ended up going into um, the ditch, right? So this stuff here, um, this stuff ended up in the ditch, uh, post-dates uh, the ditch, okay? We've used the word post-dates in a different context. <laughs> oh, God! So, so, so the ditch itself, the, the terminus, the terminus post, the terminus post quem date, right, is, 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 is the, the ditch itself, right? The terminus anti quem date is the event that occurred when the bank ended up in the ditch. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. <coughs> right. Okay. I'm glad that's made sense. Does that make sense to you, Pete? Almost. Just, just, just made it more complicated, but still, yeah, fine. Is, but there is, I know but what you're I, saying. I know what yeah, you're saying. Quem, quem is the object. It's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's the limit. Yes. It's the, the object. The limits of something. Yes. Right. And, and, but but mm -hmm. there is one thing, right, Peter, right? One last thing, right? Uh, one last thing. Um, my point and Margaret's point, right, is that the earliest possible date is the terminus post quem date right agreed we've got that right okay yeah. so but unfortunately archaeologists also say the word um post medieval right which in other words refers to the dates after the medieval period right so there's two different ways of referring to the word post and post it's the english language it's very confusing yeah Anyway, right, do you know what? Three, right, right. three, there's that stick that comes out the ground. Oh, <laughs> shut up, you tart! Okay, so, so what we're, what we're going to do now, I, I'm glad we made sense of that, right, hopefully. Um, if I if I ballsed up with the coin, you'll have to let me know. Anyway, um, I do get things wrong. Anyway, hopefully I got that right. So, so um, I, I want to... Um, you, you got me on the screen now, and the reason why you got me on the screen is that I've got I've got a new bit of technology that I've downloaded, which I'm hopefully it's going to work tonight. Um, but one of one of the one of the things that I, I, I mentioned earlier on was was this um, was this being topical, and um, and the thing is the thing is I get very frustrated sometimes that um, that we're doing things that are, are that that are really um, out there. Um, and sometimes, sometimes I feel that, um, you know, I, I should be, I should be doing more. Um, and this is why I'll be doing my live shows because it, it it's, I, I can say, right, we've been doing this and I can get out to a bigger audience and it's all thanks to you guys, um, pushing me in that direction. Um, so this, this Brixham site itself, I, 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 I will confess, um, that I didn't really know much about Kent's Cavern, um, until we actually did, did it the other week. Um, and, um, and then I looked at these sites in Brixham and to, to say that I nearly made an absolute balls up when I, when I presented this last Thursday, I nearly, I saved myself because, um, it turned out that there's three caves in Brixham. There's the cave in Brixham, which is also, which is called Brixham cave. There's a cave just outside Brixham, which is also called Brixham cave. And there's the other cave in Brix Brixham, which is the third cave in Brixham, which is, is called Ashhole cave. Right. So you've got Ben's Cave, Bone Cave and Brixham Cave. But some of these caves have got more than one name. So it's taken me an absolute hell thing to try and work out what's going on. And to be honest with you, there's one cave. I don't exactly know precisely where it is in Brixham, except that it's in Brixham. Right. Um, because one cave, which is known as Brixham Cave, is in the middle of Brixham, but it's also outside Brixham because it's got an in and an outside exit. But there's another Brixham Cave that's recently been discovered. And Anne's so confused. So let's get on with it. Um, right. So uh, Anne, Anne was just starting to pull her hair out there and I could tell. <laughs> um, she was just had to jab her, jab her uh, pens in her ear. Right. OK. Again. So I'm deaf. I'm keeping this 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 thing this device completely clear of stuff, um, and I'm just trying now to um, find um, that there. 
Yeah, wicked. I got PowerPoint at last. Excellent. So hopefully this should be shown. There we go. Is that showing, guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Oh, do you know what? Maybe we should just keep it on that slide and not muck it up. You know, it's so good. So Brixham Caves, two of them. And I actually found another one today, which uh, which my head went. And I just thought, no, I'm not doing that one. There's Beer Cave as well. But I think that's that's a play on words. I think somebody dug a hole in the ground. I don't know if there's any artifacts being found in there. We kept that out of it. Right? So, <sighs> so these caves, these caves are basically um, on the opposite part of the bay from uh, Torquay, which is in Tor Bay on the south coast. Easiest way of saying it. So now we know where it is. So Kent's Cavern is on the um, east side of, of um, Tor Bay. Um, and these three caves um, are on the western side, right? Job done. Easy. It makes things really sensible, right? So I, I struggle tonight to try and get the technology sorted. So we don't have as many images as we wanted to. Um, and what I've decided this evening, I tried to phone Jessica. So Jessica's hearing this for the first time. I have decided that from now on, instead of Jessica slaving over doing notes um, to the three people who get notes, um, I'm decided that um, a, a document that we do for research, we're just going to copy it out and send it to people in the post, which will save a little bit of time. So I've got a really nice document in front of me, which is a PDF. I've got another thing about um, the, the one cave that I want to um, start off with. Um, and we've got the one that's been discovered. Um, and the one that was being, I'll, I'll look at the date. I'll give you this date now. Um, it was, dis it, so we were talking about, I was doing this, Say a lie, it was discovered, rediscovered and reported on the 10th of April, um, which is really new because I'd actually been starting looking at this the, the week previous, which is great. Um, so headline news, Lost Ice Age Cave found in Brixham. I actually thought Brixham was in London, but there's a Brixham here as well. Um, yeah, I, I'm not losing the plot. There is a Brixham in London, isn't there? No, yeah. it's Brixton. Oh, shut up. I don't be so pedantic. Well, I've been there. <laughs> I don't care. I really don't care. It's just not really... I'm not interested, Andy. Right? <laughs> um, I, yeah, so there there we go, right? There is... The, Andy is... I know that's... Andy's going to complain, and that's not really clear, but Andy, just just get over it. Right? So Kent's Cavern there, Torquay, um, Torbay, Brixham there. Love it. Um, and... I, I, I just, again, I, I wanted to, to bring this to you today um, because I, I'm, I'm actually fascinated by this um, because what we do know is that the one that's been recently discovered, there's, there's a chap been looking for it for a long, long time. Um, and the other one that I want us to look at is Atoll Cave, uh, which is... Uh, which is um, Ash, Ash Hole Cave itself is, is, is a cave that a chap who's been looking for these caves uh, um, has actually, um, you know, it, there's, there's lots of problems with the way these caves are being treated. Um, Kent's Cavern um, is this wonderful cave um, that's got tourists going in it and, you know, so on and so on. But Ash Hole Cave has got archaeology, archaeological layers in Ashhole Cave, which we do believe going back, going down um, at least 30 metres, um, at 30 metres of deposits. Um, and it's absolutely fascinating. And I've got the details for Ashhole Cave here, absolutely great. Um, these are all limestone systems. And um, and what we do, we do, Ashhole Cave is a scheduled ancient monument. The one that's been recently rediscovered, they thought was quarried out and destroyed. All of these, this cave stuff is, is, is not, was well known. In fact, it's not known at all. It's not on the list of, it might, no, it's not on the list of my Paleolithic caves, is it? Well, well, no, yeah, it did say bricks. Yeah, it did actually say Brixham and Swanscombe, but nobody really knows about this. Um, so this is why we're doing it today. So if we if we sort of move up a little bit there, um, and this is this is the one that was was first discovered really, um, Brixham Bone Cave, Filts Cave, Windmill Windmill Hill Cave, which is a very different cave than Ashhole Cave, right? So I think the best thing to do to try and understand what we're getting at today, and I'm just going to close the door. Um, 
I think the best way to do of getting at this is to sort of make a little marker um, on, on a piece of paper and say, right, what cave is Carl talking about now? So um, we're going to we're going to first of all talk about this one here. Um, and this is actually um, from 19. This is an image taken from 1900. Right. That's not the archaeologist Pengeli. Um, and Pengeli is I, I wanted to phone Pete about this. I think I tried to phone Pete because um, Pengeli um, is referred to as this wonderful um, Cornish archaeologist um, who who tells us um, first about these caves at Brixham. Uh, William Pengeli, uh, this th this this master of Cornish archaeology. Um, and um, and basically, you know, it, it, I, I, I just I just wanted to try and we, we, we really looked at Pengeli and I, I was really shouting his praises. And there's more to Pengeli than meets the eye. So we, we've got four caves in the Torbay area. And keep on looking at this image. This is actually a postcard. Uh, 1900. This is a postcard from 1900. People used to sort of or I've been to this cave now. Um, this th there's a lovely story about this, and um, and the story comes in with this being found by the evidence in there being found by accident. Now, there's one thing I need to say. There's there's protection on um, this cave. It was actually open until 1977. They closed it down. You'd access it from the town, right? You'd access it from the town because it's got an entrance and an exit. So we see an um, we see an image of the exit, and 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 this is actually directly in Brixham itself. So you, you go down the little passage, um, and it closed in 1977. And it, this was Brixham's um, response to Torquay having Kent's cabin and tourists go in there, right? So Brixham had to get in on it, but it just didn't really get off the ground because Kent's cavern had already taken the market. So this is why you've got postcards like this showing you um, Brixham cave. So what we need to do. So we're going to try and do this like we did with the um, um, terminus postquenum and terminus, terminus antiquem, trying to make it a bit sort of simple to get to grips with. So this this cave itself, um, being in Brixham, um, has got um, a number of names. It's known as Windmill Hill Cavern. Uh, Wind, Windmill Hill Cave. It, 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 I think the name Windmill has been dropped because there's that famous causeway enclosure site um, north of um, north of Avebury. Um, Oh God, no, north of Durrington Walls, that's right, called Windmill Hill, right? So so they, they dropped the name Windmill Hill. Um, it's known as Brixham Cave, but there's three of them. You can't really call it Brixham Cave. It's known as Brixham Bone Cavern and Philps Cave, right? So Philps Cave. So for the take, sake of argument, if I'm going to mention this today, right, as I'm going through my notes, I'll mention it as Philps Cave, P-H-I-L-P-S. So Phelps Cave, there it is, because that's the guy who found it. And Pink, this he introduced, it was found by complete accident. Um, it was, it, they, they were doing some work in the middle of Brixham. Um, and, and yeah, so um, it was discovered in 1858. Um, and the, this, this expert from Cornwall, who, who by all accounts, I, I think this is William Pengelly's time, this great Cornish archaeologist, this is now his time. And he's being rediscovered. And, and amazingly enough, we're doing it as well. So it's great. He's out there. The name William Pengelly. Um, William Pengelly in 1858. This is not William Pengelly because it's a, it, it, it's a postcard from 1900. William Pengelly died in 1892. So uh, William Pengelly, um, when, he, when he looked at this, he'd already had a little bit of a look at Kent's Cavern. But the proper work at Kent's Cavern wasn't to begin until 1865. Um, so William Pengelly... Um, found what he believed, and it turned out to be right, the, ev the first evidence that um, human beings lived alongside mammoths and other things that go bump in the night. People didn't believe him. So the reason why Pengeli needed to excavate at um, Kent's cavern 
was because he needed to prove what he had found at this cave, Philp's cave. I remember, I've got to remember to call it Philp's cave throughout the whole thing because this gets really complicated otherwise. Um, so it was found by builder, by chance, John, John Lane Philp um, in 1856. Pengeli, obviously, Pengeli lived in the area, so that was great. And um, uh, Phil um, was searching for a pickaxe um, that disappeared. It turned out that it disappeared into a hole in the ground. Um, so he opened the hole in the ground. Um, it caused a delay on construction on a house in Mount Pleasant Road. So this is in Mount Pleasant Road in Brixham. And, you, and, and what we're going to do now, um, I just want, we're just going to, go through these images a minute just so i need to show you this image further on down the page hang on um hang on oh hang on there okay i have to show you the, another image in the break because it doesn't seem to be here sorry um but there's an image of what the entrance of this looks like which should be fascinating for us all to look at anyway so forget about that a minute I, I, for some reason it's not in there um so so Pengeli was intrigued because Philp come up with um, stalag stalactites. There was lots of stalagmites lying around. And upon hearing of this, Philp, this discovery, uh, the Geological Society of London um, drew up a lease to secure an excavation of the cavern, which was led by um, you know, the Cornish archaeologist William Pengelly. Now, if you if you go researching William Pengelly, some sources say it was an antiquarian. It definitely was an antiquarian. It was a proper archaeologist. This is why we're singing his praises. Some some people refer to him as a geologist, but he was doing, you know, on on the line of um, some of the most some of the best archaeological uh, work that we've we've had at that stage. Um, paleontologist. I don't use the word paleontologist, so we'll just call him an archaeologist for the sake of argument. Um, and he was he was the man who was to excavate the cavern on behalf of the Geological Society of London, um, who was also working alongside a certain chap by the name of Hugh Falconer. Um, and the, 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 the excavations were, were, were brilliant. It, it was it was it, it, it was groundbreaking. Um, it is a protected site and, you know, it's a site that's, um, you know, one, one of those out there protected sites. And interest, oh, we, we've got to come up some, some of these facts as well. It's obviously a limestone rock. I keep referring to it as Carboniferous limestone. It's actually Devonian limestone, which is a bit newer um, in the geological period. But it's, it's nevertheless limestone. It's still very hard. Um, and and basically the length itself is rather interesting the length itself is just under 100 meters um and it's it it's it's um i think when we're refer referring to the elevation is because it brixham's raised is 13 meters above sea level um and um and it's got up to, it's actually got up to um four up to five entrances into the chamber which does not get confused on that so, so what what we what we will say is as follows, and this is we're, we're going to be a little bit more vague on this actually. And what we're going to do, we're going to go, we're going to jump out of this slide slide thingamajig, um, and we're just going to go onto Google, and and I'm just going to track down those images. There's other images I wanted to show you, um, and then then what we do do, um, we 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 sort of um, we're going to probably bounce out. Um, and then we're going to look at Ash Hole and we're going to bounce back. So probably look at the image. So we'll give it a go, do this, a bit of Google, go through the images um, and then we'll do Ash Hole um, and we'll, we'll look at that discovery and we'll bounce back to a paper about what was found in Brixham again. So this is uh, um, at Phelps Cave, corrected myself. In excavating the cave, the team... Now this this is really interesting. I, I I actually thought that um, I actually thought this grid square excavation method was actually first trialed out in 1865 on Kent's Cavern, but it was actually first used as an exploration technique for the first time ever in 1858. So so this is the cave 
where the where the reading of layers in a um, vertical context, so you read the layers as you go down, excavating in a hor horizontal context as you go down. Um, this this was um, an um, an exploration technique that had never been used. So so this new excavation technique was perfect by the time Pengeli used it in Kent's cavern. It had first been trialed out here. So any problems with the excavation technique were to be tested. Unfortunately, even because it was a new excavation technique, people doubted Pengeli's excavation techniques. So we had to try out this excavation technique again in Kent's cavern on sealed contexts. Because what was being argued at the time that um, the, because this science was so new and we're only we're only still talking about Charles Darwin um, and we're talking about people still believing in the Bush at Bush at nonsense. And uh, and um, oh, yeah, we've got to mention him. We've got we've got to vilify him again. Reverend Buckland. Um, and um, and so during the excavation, again, 36 Paleolithic artifacts were discovered. So artifacts that dated from before 12,000 years ago. Now, there, there's there's we've got to come to we've got to come to um, a score level. The word Paleolithic was not used. Um, at that time, they would be using the word Stone Age. So by the time Pengeli's excavating at Ken's Cavern, the word Paleolithic has just been invented um, in 1865. So at that point, he's able to say these are Paleolithic artifacts. Before the word hadn't been invented, there were Stone Age artifacts. But now we know them as Paleolithic, so before 12,000 years ago. Pengeli was still up against the, the establishment and those that believed that, um, that you know, the Earth was only a few thousand years old. So what he discovered, this is this is key. He discovered these right. He discovered he discovered these uh, Paleolithic um, artifacts. Um, can it, can everybody bear with me a second? Hang on, it's off the other phone. Stay there. Hello. Right. Okay then. Um, I'm teaching a sec, so I'm gonna I'm run and do that now. Hang on a minute. Fix in a sec. Bye. Bye. -bye. Right, folks, can you all bear with me a minute and talk amongst yourselves, but I'll keep this image on, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll be back now. I've just got to do something. Uh, I've, I've just got to, I've got to move the sheep a second. So I'll, I'll be two minutes. I'll see you in a sec. Where has he put the sheep? <laughs> well, where is he going to put them? <laughs> probably in the road. Yeah, they probably got out, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah, got a phone call about it. <laughs> Your sheep are out. <laughs> Doesn't that mean many classrooms does eat sheep moving? No, that's true. <laughs> Is that anti quim or post quim? <laughs> <laughs> I've never ever heard of that phrase before, quim. No. 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 It's a lot. In the, Latin. Wherever there's a a, a, a line where you're, where, where you're excavating and you come across a given level and then you come across the next given level that I can understand where one is anti creme mm. yeah. after the after the first level um, yeah. is anti creme and then before the next level is obviously post creme so something could be anti and post yeah I presume creme is an inanimate object isn't it well I probably yes yeah. I thought he said it meant limit, yeah. which would be well, yeah, rather, rather than, than an object. It means, does, yeah. If it yeah. means limit. That makes sense, uh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, it yeah. doesn't help our dig because they all came out the spoil tip. Well, well, that's, that's, <laughs> How did you discover those bodies then, Andy? Um, the the bodies are in a line that is the in the um, the foundation trench for a wall that's going in. Um, and they, they fortunately, the guy with the digger went down very carefully because he, it's a known site yeah. and 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 just touched them. And, and they you know, we, we were able to save them. But um, um, as I say, all these coins, the coins that have come up are all actually in exceptionally good condition. The guy that found them um, was just really jumping up and down, really excited as to in what good condition they are. There's one of those cartwheel two penny pieces as well. Oh. And things, uh, and and they look almost new, um, mm -hmm. um, which would suggest that they were dropped new, as as Carl said. But because unfortunately they've come out of the uh, the the um, 
spoil tip layer that's been now it's leveled off for a um, level as you've been used as part of the ground to leveling it the area off um there have no datable no use datably so it's a bit of a shame we've got nothing from around the actual um skeletons themselves absolutely nothing were the bodies just in a in a pit were they not in no a no they're they're in a line and there are what's it one two three four five six burials yeah. um but with 10 bodies in um some are on top of each other one was actually face down oh they did um, that one was on its side and and all hunched up yeah. which is the one that um, was saying that the guy with reckoned had been put in quite some time after it had died because yeah. it, um, the decay had caused the um, changing of the shape of the body in yeah. the shape it was in. He said it couldn't possibly have been put in the ground that way. Mm. So we think that they've been put in in a bit of a hurry. So Have they been, have you left them there? What's going to happen? No, 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 because they, they would be smashed up. The digger's got to go through that layer to put, oh. to get down for the foundation. Where so are what? Well, what we've done is we've um, we've exposed them because we um, it was supposed to be a one day quick dig, mm -hmm. but because there are so many bodies, we've still got um, two to finish digging out tomorrow. Wow. Um, so we're actually exposing them, uh, recording them, and then lifting them and storing them. Uh, some research will be done to try and find out who and what they are, uh, yeah. and then they will be reinterred um, in a in probably in the in Beetham churchyard. So. Yeah, there's no records in the, in the church records. Not, not that we know of, no, because it's it's at, at, at the a site that is is pre, um, pre uh, Saint Michael's, which is the Norman one. So, ah, right. Interestingly, I, Pete, the uh, sorry, interesting, the the, the the I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but the the the, the name before Saint Michael's was actually a Cornish saint's name, Le Leoth or Leo. Or something like that, which I'd never heard of before. I, I was just reading a document about it last night, um, but um, not the name we we're looking for. The one was the, the one before that was Saint John. So mm. uh, good, good, good old Saint sorry. John. Any, sorry. Anyway, sorry, sorry about that. I, I had to uh, clear the sheep. Mm. Uh, anyway, oh, we're cheering the sheep tomorrow. Oh, a nice one. Well, well, actually, actually, we we should be ruining them, but uh, um, they're they're, they're uh, plucking off the. Um, the wool, but we're going to be uh, shearing them. Right. So uh, any, anyway, back to what I was saying, back into the flow. Now, the thing is, Pengeli was actually finding artifacts, human made artifacts with uh, animals that were extinct. Um, and back to what I was saying, he, he was he was using this wonderful technique, um, which, which would see that the layers would um, match the artifacts that were being excavated. In other words, it wasn't being done willy-nilly. He was one ahead of Colonel Wood, in fact, a long way ahead of Colonel Wood, who was still exploring the caves on the Gower at this stage. So, so finding some of the artifacts um, were, were Pengeli believe, directly associated with these extinct, extinct animals. And, but, um, some of the more um, sceptical members of his team um, basically said, well, you know, this is this doesn't make sense. And Pengeli was saying, oh, look, you know, we, we've used this excavation method in this layer. There's nothing in this layer. There's like a, some human stuff in this layer. There's some human stuff in this layer. There's human stuff and animal bones. Um, and there's in this layer, there's 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 human bones. And there's the remains of some extinct animals. And people said, oh, but that can't be true. And Pengeli said, what do you mean? How, how can't it be true? What, what not about true don't we understand here? So in other words, he had, he had people who were very skeptical of, of his techniques. Um, today, it doesn't make sense why they were skeptical. Uh, surely if there's a layer and there's another layer before, b below it, Obviously, the layer below it must be older than the one above. But people couldn't see that at that time. Remember, lots of the people who were excavating with him <coughs> would have would have been would have been people who were convinced that um, you know that the Earth itself uh, was created in 404 uh, BC, and that was it. So, um, so, so he needed a site like Kent's Cavern a few years later to to basically say, right, do you see? 
do you see that over there? The um, do, do, do you see that over there? You know, you've got stalagmites, and they say, yeah. Well, how how old do you think those stalagmites are? Are oh, they just a couple of thousand years old? So would you agree if we remove those stalagmites, the stuff underneath is going to be older? Uh, oh, uh, really? Yeah, it's going to be older because the stalagmites are on top of it. And this is what he had to do. He had all these people who were just not really believing no matter what. So he needed to excavate seven years later to prove his results at um, this wonderful cave at Brixham, um, this wonderful site, cave known as uh, Phillips Cave. So um, he had to go out, out of the country, actually, and he started, um, um, he, he had to go out of the country um, and he had to look at other artefacts as well. Um, and Pengeli, Pengeli um, was starting to believe in what he was finding um so you know he, he was he was quite convinced that these the remains of the animals found in the cave including those of extinct species such as oryx woolly mammoth as well um as well as other um animals that are now absent in in spotted um in, in europe such as spotted hyena he was convinced he was starting to convince himself the stuff that he was finding at phelps cave was really old was in fact some of the oldest archaeology um, that had been ever excavated in Britain. And he was actually starting to really convince other people that he needed to excavate the Kent's Cavern to actually get conclusive proof of his findings at um, Phelps Cave. In other words, you know, just, just listen to those words again. We're just going to use this. This, um, this excavation itself is actually the, a trial um, for this new excavation technique, the, the grid, um, uh, the grids, the grids system, the grid box um, excavation system of exploration, the first time it was ever used. Um, and th this, this is the beginning of modern day archaeology in Britain. Um, I, 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 I'm going to say it. Uh, this is when everything changed in, in British archaeology. So what we're going to do, I, I want us to go on to Google a minute. As, as I said, we're going to we're going to slightly um, muck Andy's mind up. We're going to put that that way and we're going to just go there. Um, and we're going to go with this. Um, and what we're going to do, we're going to... So when you type in, in in Google here, you type in Brixham Cave. Um, and I'm just going to... Uh, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. I've just got to chuck some uh, grapes out for Baldrick. Baldrick, in you! There you go. There's some food in you. Right, OK. Um, do you know what? Most people think as an archaeological lecturer, I am so bizarre. Um, right, so what we've got is if you type in Brixham Cave on the map, remember we're looking at Phelps Cave, right? Remember the three caves. So if you if you scroll through these, you see this this itself is the underground um, workings of Phelps Cave. So there, there we go. This is this is all the work. That there is ash hole on the left, which we've got another image to look at. That's obviously Phelps Cave. That's the exit of Phelps Cave, which is alongside the road. That there, which we've got, which we do see. Um, and what we're going to do there, there, that's the one I wanted to show you. That one there, bingo. That there um, is basically, um, it, they call it a sinkhole, actually. But that there is actually the entranceway that you used to use to get into Phelps Cave up until 1977. They actually closed it. So you can imagine that that, that, that is what's going on. Um, this is in Mount Pleasant Road. Um, so we're going we're gonna to come back to this. And I do believe, I do believe, if I, um, I do believe, funnily enough, and I, do, I, I did actually think I saved it, but I'm not sure. I'm just going to scroll through these. There's, a, there's an image showing our friend, um, one of his excavators. Uh, oh, uh, no, so not that one there, because that's Kent's Cavern. Um, if I can just, if I give me a couple of seconds, there wasn't another image on it, on here. Um, lot, this is that's McCurney's work on the left there with with the flints. That that's uh, Kent's cavern again. Um, you know, I can't find it now. It's just the problem. The problem is getting used to this technology. I've got to, I've got to download these things, and I've got to put them on something else, and then I've got to make sure I don't have too many, and then I've got to upload them. But any, anyway. So what, what, what we've got, we've got that one image that I did want to show you, um, which is our, uh, which is our entranceway. I think that that's a wonderful, 
you know, I, um, oh, hang on a minute. Let's just go back again. There, there is, um, I did actually write in my diary, actually. Um, just, just, just go along with me a minute. I just did write in, I wrote in my diary earlier on. I said this to Jessica last week. I said, there's a guy called Darren Murray who's by all um, accounts, he's an amateur archaeologist, which is a term I hate using because he seems to, he knows what he's doing. So Darren Murray will upgrade into archaeologist. Um, I was going to contact him to see if we could organize a day visit to just see, see, see this stuff at Brixham. Um, but the way things stand with archaeology coming and trying to organize these things, it, it's, it'd be difficult. But, um, you know, it'd be nice to sort of have a day out and looking at these things in Brixham. Uh, but I'm well aware that you guys are in in the likes of um, uh, Arnside. So what I'm going to do now is go back onto that technology that that, that we had a minute ago. Um, and if we go to there, PowerPoint quickly there again, and I'm just going to scroll through these images and then I'm going to get my other information. Remember that. Remember, remember I think this is fascinating. This. Um, we, we see lots of evidence, don't we, of, of, of hyena um, from here to um, a, um, Goff's cave to um, over on the Gower. So spotted hyena seem to be everywhere. It's not an animal that we, we, we sort of come across, is it? So the, the taxa that we come across, that's what they would call it in mammalia terms. Um, so we've got that there. I'm just going to make sure that um, my ash hole stuff is ready. And, and then we, we had a, we did have a little bit of a break a few moments ago, but we will have a proper break um, anyway. So again, there's our Phelps cave. Now this is this is ash hole, which is where we're going to go next. Now ash hole, there's a bit of a tragedy about ash hole because it's um, it's massively important ash hole. It's in fact more important than any of the other caves that we've looked at. In, in regards to the intact archaeology there, but it's being really treated abysmally. Um, and there it should be gated to stop people going there. Um, so that back where ash hole is, you can see where Brixham is on there, Brixham. Um, and um, so if we if we go, if we keep going. Now this is this is Brixham again. This is looking in Brixham. Uh, no, that again. Um, sorry, don't want to confuse you. This is ash hole in Brixham. So again, just remind us, ash hole in Brixham, um, and this is ash hole again. So we can see looking out and looking in. Now, what what what, what it would be good is if we if we haven't. I, I know I'm rushing through these, but that's the one um, that our friend, what's his name now, Darren Murray, rediscovered only very recently. Everyone thought it was destroyed, but that that cave itself. Has got some really, really well preserved archaeology in it. Um, hang on, let's just uh, see. So, what else we've got here? Um, and this itself, this is that ground plan that we'll be looking at in regards to when we go back and looking at Phelps Cave. Um, oh, and also, um, I've got a, I've got a one thing to sort of keep us going to let us understand. There's a name for this one. Um, this is this is the lost one. Um, and if I can remember, I did write this down earlier on. Uh, this is called, this is called, um, um, oh God, hang on a minute. I did write it down. So it's called Bench Cave. Just reminded myself of that one. Hang on a minute. So, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I think the official name for this one is Bench Cave. Um, to differentiate it between the other oh yeah bench cave this is bench cave so you've got ash hole which is what we're going to do before the break and after the break we've just looked at Phelps cave and we've got this one right bench cave this is the one that disappeared and he's just we found it um this again is what we will we'll, we'll do this is this is our Phelps cave this one here you can see how complicated it is and that is the exit onto the roadway i think I'm, I think that image there is that there on the roadway is I do believe that there. So that's um, can you that word there windmill hill road, which is in fact that road. Yeah, but one of these here um, is an exit that leaves out onto 
Mount Pleasant Road, one of these here, one of these exits. It's quite a complicated thing to understand. So that's going on to Windmill Hill, but that's actually, this is the uh, wonderful um, uh, Filts Cave. This is what this one is. Um, and what we've got is when we, this is Filts Cave as well, Bone Cave, Bone. And we've got an, images of the, um, some of the artifacts found in there. So obviously these Paleolithic artifacts found uh, with um, lots of the lots of the animal remains, the ma ma mammalia remains. So what I what I'd like to do now is I'd like to is trying to fit this all together. It's, it's taken me a few. It's take, taken me a little bit of a while to get my head around it because and the, and it's very difficult to get the right images. That's one thing I've struggled with because what what when you when you're doing something like this and you've got three caves which have all got the same name. Uh, People, people put that up. Oh, that that's Brixham Cave. Like, no, it, it's um, uh, it's Bench Cave in Brixham. And then they say, oh, this this is Brixham Cave. No, it's Ash Hole Cave, Brixham. So this is where we're going to go next. This is where we're going to go next. Um, and again, what I might do is just go on to Google again and just like we type in Ash Hole Cave and there's some great images on there. Which, if you if you don't mind, that's what we're going to do now. Um, we're just going to go there, Google, um, and we're just going to we're going to type in um, ash hole. Um, I do. This is all prepared, but it's just want to give you some more content. So the the I'll tell you which is which now. So we'll just make sure we're doing these are all ash hole. There you go. So go like that. This is from inside ash hole. There it is. We've seen this one. Um, it looks quite mysterious. Ash hole there. There it is. There's there's ash hole. Beautiful cavern there. So that's that's a that's a good one to probably look at now. So ash hole cavern, limestone cave system. We know that. And now this is you. You got to you got to take what I'm just about to tell you. We've got evidence there. Um, very consistent evidence in there from Neolithic times, right? But this has got Paleolithic archaeology, really intact Paleolithic archaeology. And, and when I give you the facts and figures, it blows your mind. So this has been, this is a scheduled ancient monument since 1966. And so what we've got, we've got some really nice information, nice bit of history and some stuff about excavations. Now, unfortunately, the excavations are a bit skewy. And the reason why the excavations are a bit skewy is because the person excavating there was excavating before um, Pengeli's time. A guy's name, this guy, this name will be familiar from, it's a Reverend Henry Francis Light. We've mentioned him before. And he was excavating here in 1830. Um, and he was excavating um, quite some meters deep. And, and the one thing that is to be seen um, is that light did actually give us some nice information, which gives us an idea of what Ash Hole Cavern is about. So you, you, you do walk through an area of woodland from, from the main town itself. And the, it's, again, this limestone um and there's various fissures and chambers in the rock we don't really know the full map and plan of this this cave system we really don't because it's it's one of those weird ones um there are two caves into there are two entrances into ashhold cave um and there is actually a big hole in the roof as well and it unfortunately there has been some damage caused this, this is damage caused through quarrying that occurred in the 1800s. We've got a very large chamber. So what we need to do, just sort of, there you go. This is our Darren Murray. It gives you an idea. This is a huge cave. And this should have been Kent's cavern. Um, but the archaeology is a lot more complicated here. The layers themselves are very, very thick. So we've got this huge chamber. We've got other chambers as well. Um, and there's lots of loose, loose rock because of the collapse from the ceiling and we've got archaeological evidence that just goes on and on and on and on and there's another chamber that is accessible using a ladder 
Um, so this chamber has inscriptions all over the walls over the years. Um, and lots of these, we know that people have been inscribing into the flowstone on the rock, the flowstone, the, the calcite flowstone on the rock. Um, and not similar to Kent's Cavern, this is a different baby at Brixham, um, Ash Hole. And um, again, it's, I, I just sort of got excited about this one. And what, what, what we will do, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about the history um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll give it a break. So there is evidence of the cave. We know that the cave has been used as a sheltered area in the Neolithic period. So going back at least 6,000 years ago, Fra fragments of pottery dating from the Bronze Age have been found in here as well. And outside the natural entrance or, or what we, we are seeing. This is a very, this is another thing. This, this links us in with some of the other stuff that we've been looking at. Um, and I think there may have been reference in one of the other lectures to this may have been one of the places used as to worship Mithras. Not sure on that. Roman burials have been found within this cavern. Roman burial. Um, burials, cremational urns have been found with ashes in them. And these so we've got Roman evidence again, and what we do, if we want to use the words that we've, we've used already, the terminus uh, postquem and the terminus antiquem, the earliest dates that we have for the Roman layers in the cave are from roughly 50 years AD and the reign of Nero from about 60 years AD. So the, the terminus postquam, the earliest possible dates that, that any Roman stuff was going on here, are dated looking at the, the, the coin evidence. There couldn't be any, there's no, we don't have any other dating evidence before that, right? The, the coins of Claudius from about 50 years AD. So, so the Roman evidence is likely not to date from before that, unless there's stuff buried from before that, which didn't have coin evidence, right? So this was discovered by light in 1831, which is on the back of other work that was done to understand Kent's cavern with McKerney's work um, a few years earlier, because he was looking for he was looking for um, temples to do with Mithras at Kent's cavern as well, um, which is just across the bay. So we do have excavation evidence here. And several excavations have taken place, um, um, which could be said to be learned excavations, but we've got lots of screwy stuff as well. So we're going to do the screwy stuff. And so we've got um, uh, excavations in the early 1900s and the 1800s, lights excavations, and obviously other work as well. Well, lights excavations are very odd, very, very strange, and it takes us into another direction. But I want to do that after the break. And then you compare Light's work with, with Pengeli at the end. So, so we'll, we'll, we'll just, uh, you know what, we'll just um, pleasure myself a little bit. Um, I'm not exactly sure that that is actually an image of, but what we do have, this is, look at that there. It's almost, now this is really interesting. So you've got copper oxide, or is that a coloration which has come off the calcite? I don't really know. Um, but there is like a, um, a green uh, malachite sort of colouring in here. Or that could be the algae. That's one of the fissures in the rock, which, you know, and the calcite itself um, is very intriguing. There is, there is very few um, stalag, there's very few stalactites in there because they've all been taken off and sold on eBay. Yeah, they, um, stalactites you can sell palletites on eBay. Again, looking at our Ash Hole Cave, lots of sources, lots of images. Um, and Oh, and there, there he is. Um, well, that's another person. Um, no, actually, yeah. Very, very, no, the very head's the location, isn't it? So that's another giving you an idea of scale. That's not David Murray. That's David Murray. There he is. You can see it's vast, isn't it? It's absolutely huge. So we'll come back to this image after the break, and, and then we'll, that's what we'll do. So I'm just going to go back, see if I can find us again. Um, yeah, back.
that's on Zoom, and we'll stop sharing. Right, so I, I don't know where, I, I think Claire's still with us, isn't she? Claire's still with us, so I think probably Claire will have to lose, uh, we'll have to lose Claire in a minute, so. Uh, yeah. Um, Claire, um, we can't call you Kinky Claire anymore because you'll be um, doing dentistry work, so we'll have to come up with a new title for you. Anything you'd like to say? No, thank you, it was interesting. Good, good. You have, to, you have to get down there and see that. Yeah. Well, what, what, what you need to do, Claire, put an ad on the, the Facebook page for um, dating thing. I mean, you can meet somebody in um, Brixham and you can visit no, these thank places. You. All right, then. It's just <laughs> a suggestion. Twice, eh? all, all, all right, then. All right, Bye. then. Fair enough. We'll leave that one. Claire, are you joining us next week? Yeah. Brilliant. Look forward to seeing you next week, Claire. Thanks, thanks for joining us. Bye, Claire. Bye, Bye, Bye. 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 Uh, right, Andy. No, nope, it's good. Interesting stuff. Yeah, it is. I'm, I'm getting intrigued by this stuff. Anne. Yeah, wonderful. I love the, um, the the visuals of these huge caves. I mean, they're amazing. Aren't they? it, it is. It is. It is, definitely. Yeah. Um, I would say next week we're doing Swanscombe and we're actually going to prepare, we're going to compare Swanscombe with a foreign, with a, a, a European site. So we're doing a bit of European stuff next week. Um, David. No, thank you. Well, we're not leaving yet, David, so don't go. Margaret. This, this could, could well be a very dumb question, but um, I'm just interested in the digging through the layers, through the strata. Is the only reason you'd know that you were down to the, Paleolithic period because of the artifacts that you would find in that layer? Not necessarily, because you could look at the, um, no, because it, it, Pengeli come up with this, um, when we were talking about Ken's cabin, Pengeli was coming across this reading the layers. So mm. he's reading, he's reading the layers associated with the flowstone, uh, associated with the stalagmites, um, mm. which was formed on the layers. So he's actually reading the layers. So he's, he, it, you know, as I say, people class him as a geologist because he was first employed by the Geological Society to excavate, but, but he's an archaeologist in his own right. Mm. You, 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 I, when you look, when you look at the, when you look at the references, you see um, Pengeli, the first Cornish archaeologist or something. Mm. So it's, so the, the strata, the layers are quite obvious, are they? When you um, down. Mm. Not when you when you only if if you break if you um, cut through a, um, a stalagmite right you can see the layers perfectly. Right. You can't get an idea of the stalagmite layers or or, or the flowstone on the, the stone itself unless you actually section it, which is what he was into. So as he's excavating down, you can see all the different layers where there might be a, a layer of a flowstone and there might be a layer of a, a crappy layer or whatever and something else. This is what he's doing. Presume as, presumably, as you get down to the earlier layers, they're compacted and a lot harder to dig into, to excavate, are they? Mm, not not always, but usually, yeah. Yeah, so, as, as at be them aren't. We've, we've got a compacted layer quite high up, and then it goes very soft underneath, which is uh, a bit odd. So, uh, actually, actually, Andy, can you just take... I'm going to take that thought. Um, we, we've got all this land here, right? And uh, wherever we're digging holes, we're finding nothing because we're not actually working on the archaeological site at all yet. Yeah. Uh, but what we do have, um, you have this really compact top layer, which it shouldn't yeah. be. And yeah. below that, it's really soft. Yeah, that's exactly um, what we've got to be them. That's exactly what we've got. Yeah. And the thing is, the thing is, right, we, we assume that this was agricultural land. Mm. Um, but it, 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 it's strange. There's something not quite right about what, where we are. But yeah. in, would it yeah. be sufficient just to tackle it all with a trowel or would you need something a bit more substantial? Uh, the problem with, with this type of archaeology, you need to uh, uh, tackle it all with a trowel. And uh, uh, and you, if you come across flowstone layers and you're going to have to get mm -hmm. into the idea of the geologist. But but there is. Well, we, we do we do have um, we are very lucky these days, um, which we're going to be getting hold of. Now, what's it called again? Hang on a minute. Have I got it just written down somewhere? Um, I, I want to. Uh, if you've got um, if if you've got one of those um, those hand power grinder thingamajigs, you can use that as an excavation tool if you want to cut through uh, layers. Mm. And you get a, you get a section. I can't remember the name of it, but we're going to be getting one of those. 
um, a hand grinder, whatever. Anyway, I can't, I can't, can't really work out what it's called. But any, anyway, so, um, so basically, if you're cutting through geological layers, you can actually use geological equipment, grinders, and so on to get through it. That's what they that's what they use to cut into, cut um, an outline around dinosaur bones now, Ooh. instead of just using a hammer and chisels. So. Yeah. So remember, remember the type of layers you're working on could actually be going into um, fossilization. Yeah. So you can't exactly use towels on all of it. I guess you've so. got to be careful not to damage anything in the upper layers, haven't you? Or it, 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 well, the thing is, what you might have, you might have a hard layer of um, stalagmite calcite, right? And underneath you might get a really soft layer. Yeah. Then you might get stal another thick stalagmite layer. And then you might get a soft layer and a soft layer. So then you might see something that's really hard and you might think that's it. But then you might get a soft layer underneath that, something that me and Andy's just been describing. Yeah. Right. OK, thanks for that. Um, uh, Pat, anything you'd like to say, darling? Um, yes. <clears throat> I don't know if any of you know where this museum is, but I stood in front of this display and it was all the layers. And it was like eight foot tall, four foot wide. And you could see the soil, you know, all the way up. Oh. And again, arrows pointing at what was in each layer, you know, to tell you how many years old it was. Are you sure know. that wasn't York? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, there, there, remember. There, is some, there is something like that at York. It sort of tells you that that's the Viking layer, that's the Anglican layer, that's the post-Roman, and that's Roman, and that's, yeah. All right, so a museum, the York Museum, or uh, no, it's it's the it's the um it's uh, the multi um multi angular tower, and there's a little uh, thingamajig over there that shows you all the layers of the ramparts cut through. Oh, this was in a, a building. Oh. Uh, oh, that that's also Jorvik Viking Center. Oh, oh, that they have something be... like that Jorvik Viking Center. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So I, I, I'm completely, you, you completely lost me now. <laughs> it was nice to see the layers. I like the layers. But, you know, now I know more, I might, you know, be more interested, you know. <laughs> layers are good. Layers are good. It's like, it's like Roger's teeth. Uh, Roger, any, any, uh, anything you'd like to say, Rog? No, it's pretty interesting. I'm going to knock off early. But uh, I've been looking at the, uh, the caves before you came up tonight to start exploring stuff there because it's so full of just about everything. And yeah. after, especially after the symbols, you know, the concentric circles you've seen and uh, <coughs> the use of cake. But I'll, uh, uh, Ro Ro Go on. I'll see you after I open my coffee. Oh, Ro Roger, 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 can you hang on just for a minute? Ro right. Roger, Ro Roger, stay on for a minute because I want to show you all something. Hang on a minute, just... Um... Uh, uh, Pete, can you can you talk can you talk a minute, Pete, while I just get this thing on you? Well, I'd like to know how how these this caverns were formed in the first place. <clears throat> was it for the uh, the movement of the Earth's surface? Was it perhaps water uh, washing through them until the uh, the actual uh, the uh, source dried up? <clears throat> uh, lime, limestone quite often is for, uh, caves are formed by the flowing of water. Yeah. And uh, uh, well, actually, look, actually, it's Pete, so big. Yeah. Actually, Pete, what we're going to do, we're going to we'll do that after the after the break. Because I wanted to show okay. uh, Roger this quickly. Okay. Um, Roger, are you looking? Yeah, I'm looking. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. Let Let's just. Um, I I got to put the lights on in here after you've got. Hang on. I have just got to try and share. All right. Sharing. The sharing. Sharing is caring, as Peter knows, because I always share my feed with my food with Peter. Uh, right. So you, here, here we go. This is this is our new website, right? Um, if you type in restoringwelshhistory.com, this is our new website. That's the that's the land where I am there. Well, and we scroll up. Uh, it discusses all the online classes. Uh, we've got. Um, We've got a new class starting on Sunday evening, which you can sign up to, which is looking at um, inscribed stones uh, in, in Cornwall, Cymru and elsewhere. So if anyone wants to sign up for that, just go onto the website. Uh, this is what you're doing on a Tuesday. Wednesday, we've got the history of torture in the British Isles. 
um, which will be um, which Jessica doesn't know about, but she'll be teaching that at seven o'clock on a Wednesday coming up soon. Uh, we've also got uh, Tuesday um, um, before these classes. We're looking at the Roman era. Sit back and listen. Uh, Wednesday, we've got the Archaeology of the Line continuing. I've, I've actually had communication with this guy, Tim and Gold, yesterday. Sunday will be um, the Castles of Cymru. This is all on the website. This is about the membership there. Um, some book stuff, our, our new hoodie that we're selling. Um, and the new T-shirts, if anyone's interested. Those are the live classes. Obviously, that's going to be difficult for you guys to get to um a warm-up walk in west wales um a donation thing um young explorers and a few other videos and stuff here so if anyone's interested um it's restoring welsh history um usually what happens if you go from an external link you type in restoring welsh history it says oh the page is not available click here and you click here and you get onto it so i just wanted to show you all that so i think i think i think we've done all questions now if no if i've left anybody else to speak now but roger wants to go so um we will we'll, tomorrow I'll, Carl. I'll see you tomorrow and yeah we'll have a break now thank you very much and pete will do the bye. uh bye the roger bye, bye. See you all. take care see you yeah. roger okay. uh, tomorrow, bye. Pete. Bye. Yeah. Okay. Pete, we'll do the question about the caves after the break, um, yeah. We'll yeah. Have yeah. A break okay. good thanks Carl. followed up cheers rog but I'm glad, I'm glad you still love me, Rog. I love you really, but I'll be saying oh, terrible things about you. you when know you're that, gone. Carly. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. Uh, Cheers, Rog. Right. Take care. Take care. La, 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 what a lovely day. Oh, what a lovely morning. Roger. God, he was getting so upset. Look, I'll get Queenie now.
Oh, I've got a hot cross bun Ooh. from the bakery. It's yummy. Lots of cinnamon in it. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Mm. I do like cinnamon. So do I. I have it on my porridge. Oh, do you? That's yes. a good I make my porridge. I always put a sprinkle cinnamon on it. Hmm. So she's got she's got almost eight baby chicks in that nest, all huddled together, and she <laughs> sat on them. And I think, poor things, <laughs> how are they surviving with her sat on them like that? She fluffed well, up her. Know, you'd think she must know what she's doing, wouldn't you? Oh, well, of course she does. Of <laughs> yeah. course she does. She's fluffed up her feathers, and she's <laughs> down, head under a wing, and she yeah. sat on the eggs. <clears throat> They're in front of me on the television. <laughs> the camera is connected up to my television. It's yeah, oh, that's about. great. Lovely. It is. I saw a duck yesterday with eight ducklings following around. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're going to survive. But they were lovely. Uh, we get shell ducks out on the island, and they all have up to six ducklings. Mm -hmm. But the seagulls and the uh, and and the peregrines and all, they'll take the ducklings. That's right. That's only about how many survive, survive the... because many of them are taken, aren't they, by other oh, That's animals. right. Only about two of them actually survive the yeah. uh, to to to, to uh, swim away in the in the, uh, yeah. and, in the autumn. Yeah. That's right. Anyway, she got out yesterday, so I, oh, she seems to be looking after him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I've always wondered what's behind your head on the wall. What do you? What's hanging behind your head, Anne? Me? Oh, it's a, it's a, um, a China leaf. It's a, well, not China. Or clay. Sorry. It's a clay leaf. Oh, with one. One. Yeah. With a, yeah. The leaf, huh? Yeah. I, I've been guessing and guessing. I, I might be able to show you a bit better. I don't know. Tortoise or something. I don't, I don't know if the light's on it. I can't get the light on me. Oh, very nice. No. Oh, oh, I oh, see. Well, it is nice. Yeah. yeah. Pretty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the glaze is what does it. It's pretty colours. Yeah, it's got a sort of, yeah, a glaze. It's just. I bought it years ago. It's a, I thought it was a lovely thing when I found it in one of these um, uh, craft fairs. Yes. But, yeah. uh, you know, but not, you know, you get craft fairs where there's a lot of these junk, but you get others where you get a lot of good, good people doing things. And yeah. it's really nice. Well, it sort of looks like a tortoise or a, a hmm. sea creature, you know. I <laughs> keep yeah. looking at yeah. it. <laughs> oh, thanks for showing it. <laughs> I must say, looking at it from this angle, looking at my, my picture, yes, it does look a bit weird, but, <laughs> as I say, but, it, but it, it's it's shiny. It's it's well. It's quite pretty. It's got it's sort of the veins are in and the, the colours are really lovely and it shines because it's got the glaze on. Yeah. Um, this picture I have here, it's a castle. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do yeah. you know what castle it might be? No. It's by the sea. Yes, it's yeah. not Bamber, is it? Yes, I think it is, yeah. yeah. Bamber Castle. Yeah, Bamber Castle Stormscape, it says. Oh, it's lovely. Mind you, I suppose, 
I suppose yeah. looking at it from that angle, from the sea, it would be, it would be unusual. Yeah, it is. It's very it's strange. Yeah. Like, would you? you, you know. I don't know. We guess we were just attracted to it and got okay. it, but it is sort of, um, you know. That, that's but, where the Saxons held off the Vikings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they took Linda's farm, which is just yeah. not far away. Right. The that's Vikings why we were took there. Linda's farm and yeah. uh, the, uh, uh, the castle that, that, that survived. Yep. But uh, I wouldn't want to be out in that sea that time. <laughs> no. no. Well, why not? <laughs> I bet you all know this one. Here we go. Oh, it's Anne Hathaway's, is it? No. No? no. Is it in Stratford? No, it's much closer. Oh, it's the globe. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> not the globe. Oh, what do they call it? The theatre. Pete, you've probably seen it a couple of times. The Rose Theatre. No. no. It's not that big. <laughs> oh. It's a cottage. It's a cottage, yeah. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Where? Where is it? Um, oh, no. Oh, I, I'm going to guess it's not in Wales. It is. It's been put oh, back well, together. Oh, you know? St. Fagans. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's called, oh, my husband wrote it in Welsh. <laughs> 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 That's me. Little L's in it. Oh, dear. I, I, I think, guys, I don't know what the hell's going on anymore. <laughs> think of Rough Sea, the village I was born, where you could see the... Uh, the waves actually break over the town hall clock. Oh, oh yeah. my <laughs> Wow. Is it still there? Yep. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Built of Cornish granite. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, that's the Atlantic, though, isn't it? It is, yeah. It looks, well, it looks southwest. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And it's straight in there, yeah. Big seas. Big seas. Big yep. seas. Mm. We don't get them up here. Two uh, two policemen were in a panda car coming around past it. Wave came over the top, picked up the panda car, and chucked it in the uh, arbor. Oof! Drowned, drowned the policeman at the same time. Yeah. Mm. Oh, the oh the policeman died. Yeah, he was drowned. Yeah. Oh. They were in the car. Funny. They were in the car. Just picked the car the whole lot up, chucked yep. it in the arbor. Love it, heck. <laughs> yeah. Big seas. People don't realise that you only need about 18 inches of water to float a car. Yeah. <laughs> and Andy, I should know all about that, shouldn't yeah, I? Yeah, I was just thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there was me taking the advice to go through um, massive streams of water really fast, and now Andy mm. tells me... Andy was behind, he said, who's that bloody idiot driving <laughs> through things really fast? And it was me. <laughs> Not for long. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not for long. Oh, you, you learned a good lesson there, though. It flooded the cab. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I did. I did. I did. I did. But anyway, let's let's carry on. I got. I, I got to get. I got to get back with my gay flow. Um, because there's nothing wrong with a bit of gay fandom. I, that's what I say. Right. Okay. Let's just get into it. Um, yeah. Let's, let's go back with those uh, with those images. Hang on, um, screen. I have a theory about those layers, which I'll talk to you at the end about. Oh, actually, yeah, you can talk to me at the end about yeah. it. But I was just about to. Um, I was just about to. Um, Pete, Pete was on. Yeah, anyone, everybody, don't forget to look at the wonderful website. Uh, mm. Looks look better like that as well. See, if, oh, if you look at it side on, it goes like that. You see. Ooh. That that looks really good. If you flick through it like that, it makes you drive you bonkers. Yeah, my eyes are going funny. All right, then I'll do it slowly. Right, okay. <laughs> Still okay, going funny. Just there send them the link. Mm. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll email everybody the link then. If anyone wants to, if anyone wants to do that, that looks interesting. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> we've we got as as we got uh, there, there, and the fort is on the left there. Um, and what we've got is, um, yeah, there we, there we go. This is 
so we you guys are doing that and we've got the inscribed stones um and we've got uh so jessica gets to talk about her bondage and torture on that one on the wednesday hey yeah uh, Je jessica's jessica apparently has got all this black sort of uniforms and stuff in her bedroom i don't know what they are all about mm -hmm. um and Tuesday, yeah, I, 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 basically it, it's it's going to be a complete Roman fest. You Where know? is that wall on Tuesday? Oh, that 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 there is actually um, the the part of the Roman wall in London. Yeah. That's, London. that's on the that's the east east side of the Roman wall on the north bank. Yeah, right. very near um, the, very near the Tower of London. Yeah, very right. near yeah. the Tower of London. Yeah. Oh God, Andy, you've got my head thinking. Mm. And obviously Wednesday and Sunday there, we've got them as well. So send you this. If anyone wants to sign up to any of those, then you'll be very, very welcome. Um, that, that, one's, that one's really chilled out because it's Romans. This one on the Wednesday, which I've been doing for a while, um, blows up everybody's minds. It's meant to. Uh, this is like a sort of castle type thing. And, um, it's spelled and then, based, I think. What's that? Based. Right underneath that one on Wednesday, it says B A D S E D. Oh my God, there's a mistake. It took me hours to do this. That's a mistake. That's a mistake. Yeah, that's bad mistake. said. Bad said. Is that Welsh? <laughs> <laughs> bad said on Tim Ingold's work. Bad, bad, bad said. Yeah, I, yeah that's said. Welsh. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, that's well. <laughs> All right. Anyway, let, 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 let's cr let's crack on, right. please. Meanwhile, yeah. in, in in the meantime, in the in the meanwhile, so if we go there, back in um, but but uh, no, yeah, yeah, back at look at that there, doesn't it? Oh, mm. It is a bloody big cave, that isn't it? Mm. That is yeah, it is. Uh, uh, this mm. is why I want to show you this because I uh, David Murray, um, Darren Murray actually gives it scale. It's so it's so mm. wow. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted wanted you to see that, and and basic. Well, so so we've 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 done we've done our Phillips cave, right? We'll be coming back to that a little bit, and I'm just very wary of time now. Um, we didn't been to pretty well, and I want us to continue with Ash Hole, and I want us to think. Well, back in 1830, there was this chap. Reverend Henry Francis Light. So we got um, we got um, Father McKerney that we were working in um, eighteen uh, twenty four at Kent's Cavern, and he was coming across earlier evidence, which is opposite the bay. And we've obviously got Reverend Buckland um, Gower, and it was it was um, this Light's name actually rings a bell to do with Kent's Cavern. So um, obviously, when McKerney had sort of, sort of his interest had sort of moved because he'd been put off by Buckland, um, Henry Light is here. Now, what we do find is that another chap comes in, um, a chap by the name of um, this is a lovely name, Octavian Blewett. So Octavian Blewett, um, writing in 1832, reported. There was a tradition that the cave was once open to a much greater extent. Well, we know it was being quarried. And there's also talk that passageways led off to different places. Now, I know people who love searching in passageways and tunnels. You know, there's always tunnels and passageways and the towns and cities. And, um, there was this legend that there, there was people wanted to find where this four mile long tunnel went, but it was never, ever found. Anyway. Octavian Blewett was very interested in the potential of excavating this passage, this long passage, um, and in the extremities of the cave. Now, we know that the cave is around 100 metres in length. However, there's lots of caverns and stuff that haven't been e examined. Now, the problem is that we do find is that the lots of the stalactites and the stalagmites have been removed for sale and 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 so on maybe ground up or whatever uh Blewett concluded uh, that um after looking for this passage where you couldn't find it but Blewett did give us other information so whilst Blewett's looking for something else he's actually given us information that we haven't got Blewett went on to report uh that next that that he 
I think he may have been looking exactly here because this is the biggest area. Blew it, uh, excavated what he refers to as a perpendicular shaft. So it's obviously um, um, a, a, a long straight shaft. That's my interpretation of what perpendicular is. A long straight shaft was dug into to the lowest part of the floor of the cave. Um, and after four feet, now this is this is interesting. This is this is proper archaeology, but from an age when archaeology was not being done, he was just digging there. But we'll give him credit where it's due. He was far better than um, some of his predecessors. So he dug four feet of rubbish, and had worked had been uh, had worked through a layer of bones, and he discovered that these layer of bones after four feet um, consisted of sheep, ox, rabbit, goose, chicken, bones. So the deduction was that these could not be ancient based on McKerney's work from Kent's Cavern in 1824, six, uh, because Blewett's there in 1832 here. So this is um, eight years later. So Blewett was a little bit confused at this point because this he found this quite a lot um, in a layer that was about four feet deep. But instead of going off on a tangent and saying this is like um, you know a place where the Romans were and all the rest of it, he then found out that there, there'd been a large military encampment just alongside here. And it was discovered that um, when in the summer months, it would be it would get very wet down here instead of the soldiers uh, eating outside they would go into the cave and eat so the accumulation of all these bones ox sheep rabbit goose chicken bones was associated with them which is very interesting so after he found that out he then excavated to a depth of 20 feet and there he found the remains of a human skeleton at 20 feet. Now, this tells me that the layers here are very, very, very deep. Now, this is also this is also something that Pengeli would have been aware of. Now, he's saying that the shaft was in line, large widened. He, he dug 20 feet deeper. So that's 24 deep we're going so far from the original layer. If you imagine that being the surface layer where um, Darren's sat. And immediately under this, he found considerable quantities of charcoal and ashes and half consumed bones. Basically, you know, people had been eating there mixed with broken pottery. So that means that the layers that he got to at 20, 24 feet, being that, that you've got pottery, this pottery could not have existed beyond the, the Neolithic period. So the layer he'd got to was only a maximum in my eyes of 8,000 years old. However, the pottery did not turn out to be 8,000 years old or 6,000 years old. It actually turned out to be no more than under 2,000 years because this is where he, it was Roman pottery. It, this is where it, basically they had found evidence of um, shards that had contained cremated remains. However, human skeletons were other human skeletons were found subsequently discover discovered um and what he believed was that these these layers predated the roman layers um, because sling stones and brass and ivory objects were found and other pottery which which we, he said was finer pottery so formational jars roman period finer pottery i'm not really sure what that is he continued right this is going to be a wow factor I can't, I can't get this in my head, right? I can't, I've struggled with this. He dug to a depth of 70 feet. I'll start that again, 70 feet, right? Which is um, in, in modern money, over 10 meters, uh, 13 meters deep, 70 feet he dug. And he says, as he's going down, nothing else of particular interest was discovered but he never reached the cavern floor. Are we getting it? He never reached the cavern floor. The workings having been carried out in the vast fragments of the rock which had fallen into the cave 
from the side and the excavation evidence among the loose stones became too dangerous to proceed. So in other words, what he, what he found was at 24 meters, uh, start again, 24 feet, he come across a Roman layer. Below that, he come across another layer. He went to 70 feet and he, and he didn't reach the, the floor of the cave. So that makes this a cave um, that is of massive potential. What we also find is that in the 1900s, in 1965 and 1967, there was another excavation here that indicated um, Bronze Age pottery, but I don't have a, 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 um, a level of where this Bronze Age pottery was. Now, if you do a little bit more research, right, there's nothing of a mention of Paleolithic archaeology in that. But however, if you do another search on the internet, it will actually take you um, to um, a reference. Hang on, uh, it'll take you to another reference. Hang on, let's just, um, yeah. I think this was the one. This is the English Heritage reference. Um, hang on, English Heritage. Right, hang on a minute, not that one. Actually, if you go, I remember, if you go with the English Heritage reference. Um, I, think that, I think it was this one here. Yeah, um, there, there's been other work there, and actually, they have found. Um, oh, here we go. Right, that's that. Hang on a minute. Um, yeah, we've got the human remains. I remember reading this. Um, we've got that there. Um, right. Okay. All right. There's other references here of other work being undertaken other than the two excavations. And it talks about ash hole um, being of considerable wealth and other things being found in ash hole. Um, hang on, let's just double check. Yeah, so we, we've got earlier, earlier evidence ash hole. Um, it's not very specific, but there's there's evidence of earlier fauna that's been reported as being in, at Ash Hole, um, and it, it's but it's been quarried out, so lots of damage has occurred to this site. But Darren, in another piece, um, Darren's discussion discussing about Ash Hole uh, being a site. Um, that should be given more importance within Paleolithic archaeology. I think Darren believes that this, this is the most important cave system anywhere in Britain, but it hasn't been properly explored yet. But he's also discussing that it's used as a dumping ground now, um, and extensive damage is being caused to everything in the cave. But it's a scheduled ancient monument, and it has been since 1966. So what I'd like to do now is obviously we've got lots of images that we can look at. There's Ash Hole as well. It, it's something I I would really like to visit, to be honest with you. So if we um if we go back to my Zoom, if I stop sharing, um, and I go back to that image that I showed earlier on, if we go back to that, um, we've started this. Um, we do this um, and again it's just trying to get used to this um, there it is PowerPoint so so we've looked at ash hole now quite a bit actually I want to go to this one because this is the one that was discovered a few uh, a few days ago this is bench hole so um, and then we then we go back to um, the original one that we mentioned and we'll mention a little bit about that with some images so I'm going to read out. This is directly from the Devon Live. Um, and it was also in a Cornish newspaper because it, it um, actually, if I don't mind, I'm, I was going to I was going to look at the I was going to read the Devon one. But if I if I type in because the Cornish newspaper, it goes goes for it big time. The Cornish Cornwall. Um, I, I just. Uh, here we go. Um, all right. 
Cor- ah, the Cornwellian, right? The Cornwellian, because he's a local boy. Um, this this Pengeli, they re- they really do it. So look at that image. This is the one that they've rediscovered. A lost ancient prehistoric cave, first discovered by a Cornishman, is found again. So it's been rediscovered by Darren Murray. This is known as Bench Bone, and this is where Corn they, they ref- the Cornishman. Victorian archaeologist William Pengalley. So he's an archaeologist in that one. A lost West Country cave. It's hardly West Country, but um, first discovered by a Cornishman, which helped to rewrite the textbooks on the history of mankind has been rediscovered. Benchbone Cavern, uh, which contained the bones of an, an Ice Age man and extinct woolly mammoths. This one was said to have been quarried away long ago and lost. It is one of four, hence cavern, um, felt, ash hole, and then this one, bench. Now, this adds to the story again, um, where the earliest bones of modern humans in Europe were found by the great Victorian Cornish scientist, William Pengelly. My God, he's got so many titles. Well, he would, he's Cornish, because they do brag a bit. Who was described by some as one of the earliest fathers of archaeology. For the sake of argument, that's what we're saying now. He is the father of early archaeology in Britain. The cave has now been found again after amateur historian Darren Murray, we'll call him an archaeologist, uh, set out to find it again and succeed. He said he was astonished to find part of the structure still exists, high up on a cliff face on private land near Oxen Cove. The cave is still visible and walled off. It's fantastic. Inside it, there will be evidence entombed of cavemen and huge wild ice age mammals living and occupying the area around Brixham Harbour. This is to sort of get people interested. Now, um, the, the chronology of discovering this cave doesn't add with what the headlines say. And I'm telling you now, I can't get anything else on this other than this articles that have been printed in these newspapers. It, it's a bit lost. To have all four bone caves still in existence is mind blowing with all the quarry of the Brixham area. The connection of Ice Age habitation sites and particularly Neanderthal sites, uh, habitation sites within Tor Bay is amazing. I'm still looking for my woolly rhino tooth. This was what Darren's saying. This is one of the bricks and bone caves that William Pengelly researched in 1875. Now, if he did research this in 1875, this is after the um, Filt Cave that was discovered in 1858. And way after Kent's Cavern was originally explored initially by Pengelly in, in 1847. However, Um, this was thought to have been lost. The cave is still visible and walled off. There it is. There is fantastic evidence, and we've already mentioned that. Um, Benchbone Cavern of Brixham. Here we go. Now, I can't can't get any other references to this, but I'm going to have to go with what Darren tells the newspaper. Spotted hyena. It says hyena. Woolly mammoth remains and... Now, this is very interesting. The remains of Neanderthals in the, within this cave. Apparently, these are on display in Torquay Museum and taken away in 1875. Bengeli was born in Lou, Cornwall, controversial in the Victorian times as Darwin would be. They together went against the biblical teachings. A spotted hyena and spear head from the cave were found in 1885, and the spear has been dated to 37,500 years old, and the jaw was found above the spear. So this is the this is the, a human jawbone. Are we presuming that that? I'm not sure if we're what we're presuming that is, what type of hominid, and so on. Um, the jaw was found above the spear. Proving that the man lived... Be- oh, right, it was a spotted hyena jaw. That's what we're talking about. Right, okay. Yeah, sorry, I got lost in that. So spotted hyena jaw was above the um, uh, this uh, uh, this spearhead. They, and the, the, this dated to 37,500 years old. 
So 37,500 years old is the hyena jaw. So that must mean that the um, that the um, that the spearhead is earlier. Wish I could get more reference on this. During the Victorian era, Brixham's caves um, um, attracted lots of interest, as we know. Uh, Pengeli was visited even by Napoleon III and members of the royal family as well um, in 1865. Um, now, what we do know is that the um, uh, the uh, Philp Cave closed in 1977, and um, people's interest in Brixham is not the same in regards to the Bone Caves as we find in regards to Kent's Cavern. So this is why I thought, you know, it'd be brilliant to have a little bit of a visit down there um, because this is this is stuff that we've, which is to me, this is not really studied enough. It's really not. It's something that I've not come across before. Um, now, what we do know is that some of the oldest teeth of a mammal dating back to 56,000 years ago were found in the Brixham area. We're not exactly sure where. However, it's believed that these remains from 56,000 years ago um, might be related to this cave, but this, this, these mammal teeth were found in 1945 by a teenager known as Dennis. So what I'd like to do now is I, I know time is getting away with us, so I, I, I don't want to do too much more, but I want us to um, look at uh, Br Bricks and Bone Cave. And if I can, there, there we go. And a, a Bone Bone Cave is Philp Cave, just correcting myself there. So these are very early tools, very early tools from our Paleolithic period, dating back 10, 20, 30,000 years ago and even older. So what I've got is a nice little piece on here, which is not very difficult to get hold of. So I, what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to send, um, I'm going to send the file that I'm reading out now um, to Rona, who sends out notes to three people um, to send those notes out. And I'll send that email link to you guys of, of the source that I'm reading about Philp, so you can get more information and look at these images. And obviously I will send out um, a link to the website as, as well, if that's okay. So if I can just look at this now and, and then we will call it a day. Uh, I'm just gonna read out the introduction because you'll be getting the rest. It's, quite a, it's a really nice thing, this, it's really nice. Um, if I could put that on the side so I can get it all. So Phil Cave um, is, is basically, um, you could say, was recognized at the time by leading scientific uh, authorities as proof of the antiquity of man, but not everybody. Um, now, Charles Lyle is, is um, this Lyle chap comes in as well. Now, Lyle, now, yes, Charles Lyle. Charles Lyle, who, who was the chap who first looked at Ash Hole, commented on Pengeli's work in 18... 58 from from Philp Cave um, and this is what because Lyle had already been uh, Lyle had already done a little bit of work um, and uh, I'll just chuck in a cup over, over here uh, Lyle had already done that work on Atoll so Lyle was going to believe Pengeli so Lyle so we got context so Lyle um uh, 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 done some work in 1832, um, um, or was it 18, 1830, wasn't it, um, at Ashhole. Later on, Lyle is president of the, uh, the, the geological section of the British Association. And then Lyle comments on Pangeli's work in 1858 um, in Philp 
cave in Brixham. This is what he says. It took a while for me to get out. I needed to get context. A sudden change of opinion was brought about in England respecting the probably coexistence at a former period. Did you see what he said there? He said former period. Remember, Lyle had been a reverend, or oh, he's still a reverend, of man and many extinct mammalia. In consequence of the results obtained from a careful exploration of a cave at Brixham, this is, um, this is Philp Cave in the middle of Brixham, the new views very generally adopted by English geologists had no small influence on the subsequent progress of opinion in France. There was work at a site in France, in Somme Valley, which I mentioned that, um, that the likes of Pengeli had gone to. Right. Now, this is really interesting. Uh, the words there, former period. So as much as Lyle agrees that this stuff is from an earlier period, Lyle is going back to before 404 BC when there was a former period of existence that these artifacts come from. I think I needed to make that point. He was still still slightly hedging, but he completely believed in what Pengeli was saying. Great. Here we go. Away from what... This is more back into the context of this piece. It is, however, more... It is, however, most unfortunate that there was a delay of about almost 15 years in producing the full scientific and archaeological report from Brixham because Pengeli needed to get this other evidence and prove what he was saying and, and to corroborate between his work at Kent's Cavern on the opposite side of the bay after 1865. Consequently, their great significance has as, as ever since been overshadowed by later discoveries, which confirmed what had been proved at Brixham, but which were published far more promptly. So what, what we're saying, because there was a delay in the results at, at Brixham um, and work at the likes of Kent's Cavern was a bit more rapid with Pangeli's work in 1865, by 1880, um, and then it got Goff's Cave. In other words, we like to talk about Kent's Cavern, but the stuff, the other, the, the caves at, at Brixham are massively important. So, Pengeli, we've got to mention Pengeli again before we really finish, 1812, um, 1894. Um, you know, Pengeli is a massive figure. Um, and what, if I just read this little bit out here, this sort of, this, these two paragraphs really conclude everything that we've done on Kent's Cavern and Brixham. And, and then we'll call it a day because that'll be a nice place to stop, actually. And we've got some of the evidence here. Love it. Um, and, and there again, this is our um, Phelps Cave. There we go. Pengeli had been working with others from the Torquay Society on Excavations in Kent's Cavern. This was in 1847. Obviously, things were still a bit whatever. Father McCurney had worked, as we know, at Kent's Cavern in um, 18, 18, the 1820s, 1824. But the often repeated findings of these amateur geologists that humanly uh, worked flint tools were occurring with an ancient fauna of extinct Ice Age, age mammals had been largely ignored or dismissed by the scientific establishment over a period of 30 years. So we've done all that with Kent's Cavern. Now we come into the importance of Brixham. Two of the admitted problems with the Kent's Cavern discoveries were the extensive disturbance within the cave deposits due to um, many years of hum modern human activity, including unscientific excavation and near um, specimen hunting, which in turn meant that it was far from easy to establish a clear stratigraphic succession of the cave deposits and their contents, and hence prove that the human artifacts were um, you, uh, unambiguously associated with geological deposits with ancient faunas. So to explain that end paragraph there, we need to look at what Pangeli was thinking. 
Pangeli realised that while further closely controlled excavations within undisturbed parts of Kent's cavern might eventually convince the numerous distinguished scientific doubters, and he went on to lead those excavations, the, the ideal proof would be to discover a completely sealed and undisturbed cave and similar deposits. Fossils and ancient artefacts where there could be no doubt about the character and age of both uh, the deposits and the finds within them. I've gone on a bit further, but we'll do this. The discovery and investigation of, of, of um, Philp Bricks and Bone Cave is recorded in considerable detail in Pengeli's opening observations to the society, but he didn't publish them until, eight, until the 1870s, 1873. He didn't publish them straight away after 1858. Lots of archaeologists, including me, have, have, have been victims of not getting our work out quick enough. Though the manor of Brixham had been enclosed by 1802, the original development was largely down by the harbour. In 1840, a new road was constructed up Mill, Windmill Hill, facilitating access. In 1857, uh, Mr. Philp uh, is calling him. He, he was a labourer. One minute. Now he's a local dyer. Um, bought the freehold on the top of a hill, intended to quarry, quarry away the Devonian limestone, and then he brought this parcel of land. The, Burke, the, the work must have begun very quickly. This was in January 1858. Um, uh, the quarrying had broken into a previous unknown cave in which there was a stalagmite floor with a reindeer antler and some bones firmly embedded in it, into the floor. This was the evidence, Pengali. We've got, we've got to do this, sorry. While further quarrying revealed in some places a red cave earth, oh my God, a bit like Pavlan Cave. I've not heard that mentioned uh, down here. Uh, with bones of the cemented white limestone breca, uh, which is a, a calcite sort of um, layer, both under the stalagmite floor, Pengeli soon heard of Philp's discovery and visited the new cave, recognizing the potential great importance of the discovery, persuaded the owner to give him um, first option on a temporary lease to excavate the site. On the 29th of March, 1858, Pengeli reported on the discovery of the committee to the committee of uh, the Natural History Society. Um, um, he basically got funding to do the work. Um, at that time, the sum of £100 was offered to him by the society, which in modern day prices would be £7,000, which would probably be a nice summer's excavation for Pengeli. So, um, what I'm going to do now, there's an image I want to show you. I want to show you um, Pengeli, and then that's it. Um, I'm going to get this document on here. Um, I'm going to, I want to show you this document, and I'm just going to try and get it up here a minute. Um, right, okay. I'm go, I think it's that there. And if I scroll, and this will be the last, the last act of today, there it is. Um, and let me let me enlarge this a minute. Side on. Wait for that to go. I type on there. This is a document that I'm going to send everybody. Um, and I want to show you Pengali. So let's have a. There he is. He's coming up now. Let it. Let it. There he is. Um, Pengeli, uh, William Pengeli and Hugh Falconer. And the, the, I tell you what, Falconer looks like somebody out of a Star Trek movie. But uh, there's Pengeli with his top hat. Um, and they are at Kent's Cavern. Um, it's saying that they are at Kent's Cavern in, in 1858. But why the hell are they at Kent's Cavern in 1858? Is this actually um, the other entranceway onto Windmill Hill? Um in a, in yeah, I think this is actually Windmill Hill, not because it's saying in here they are at the old entrance in Ken's Cavern. Um, but it might be that this is actually the entrance to Bone Cave. But there you go, there he is, Pengeli. And I got to be honest with you, um, you might have Trevithick uh, with a steam engine in eighteen oh six, a Cornish man. But for me, the greatest Cornish man is William Pengeli because he's given me a job. Um, he's shown us the way in archaeology and as Cornishmen go other than Pete, this is the bee's knees so what we're going to do, as I say don't forget to look at your emails later on uh, you've got um, you've got this coming to you website link, 
Um, and that's that. So we're gonna we're now gonna close that now. Um, and we're gonna do this and we're gonna stop that. Um, that was a good one tonight, if I may say so myself. Um, so so let's see who would like to say something. Um uh, look at that, Pat. Go on, Pat, talk to us. Oh, I just looked at the chat to see if there's something at the bottom on chat and it says something about the mold gold cape to be brought back to Wales, maybe. There's, you know, people want it to come back. Uh, my, my argument with that is that we, we, we need decent museum facilities to do it and, um, and, and maybe we need a specific museum for it, which would Where be the best way found? to go. Where was it found in Wales? It, it, it was found just outside Wrexham in a little weird village called Mould off a weird little side road somewhere. And we will be doing the Mould Cape in the future. Okay, sorry to get off the topic. I do enjoy this. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pat. And uh, no doubt, I'll see you next week. Who's next? Uh, let's have let's have wonderful Annie. Um, I think it's interesting that it was difficult for Pengelly to prove his point when people didn't believe the earth could be as old as he was proving it to be, it seemed. But he was Cornish, was... I believe, a Cornishman. Sorry? Go on. He was Cornish. Well, yeah, yeah. But, yeah but, but also, um, during that time when, when there was all this denial of the earth being very old, I mean, it's still, some people think it's only 5,000 years old still, but... Um, it, 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 at the same time, I had read somewhere a long time ago when I wasn't doing any of this, that people were all very interested in fossil hunting. It became yeah. very popular. And whether that had any connection with this, you know, I don't know. Just did it? Uh, yeah, I, I think that the geologists are leading the way to let us understand the layers. Um, yeah. Yeah. About the cave formation, these are Devonian caves. These are, this is um, more later than... Yeah. Um, than the Carboniferous period, I think that's right. Um, and and uh, basically, it's, it's Devonian limestone. And basically, the process, as I said, you've got limestone which create is created on the bottom of the sea. Uh, yeah. That then pushed up through geological yeah. change. That comes up, uh, and then the style. land drops yeah. again. And then there's there's the Devonian limestone, and then that comes up again. So you've got two types of limestone. And then you've got the sandstones mix up because the, these things um, yeah. stick up as mountains within lakes and you've got the sandstone yeah. pegging all the holes. And then uh, the soft limestone um, is then formed on the seabed, which plugs all the holes with the carbon reference Devonian older rock. Um, and then basically, because it's softer limestone, it's washed out um, through the fissures, which are created in the rock by rain. And the, the soft limestone is washed out, creating the cave systems within the carbon reference limestone. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so back to what you said, in, in many ways, what we do have is this sort of um, um, it, this, uh, the, the geologists, the, the, the geologists, are the, the layer people, archaeologists, are the, uh, the, the treasure hunters, yeah. well, the antiquarians. So yeah. if, you, if, you're, if you're amalgam, if you're amalgam, no, that, so the antiquarians are the treasure hunters, you get the geologists, the, the layers, the scientists. So if you put the so basically an archaeologist is a is a mixture of a scientist and a treasure hunter. Yeah. Um, so that's basically it. So we're we're, we're half we're half antiquarians and we're half um, geologists. So that yeah. makes an archaeologist. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Uh, Pete. So you talked about it digging down several meters. What was he digging yeah. into? Um, the, th the thing, the thing is, it does make you wonder. Seventy feet into a cave, it must have been quite yeah, soft. He could have been digging into rock, so it must have oh. been some form of uh, earth slide or something, which had filled that area, to it, so that he could actually dig into it. It's quite considerable the amount of soil, and and I think Pete, without without us going any further, we don't know enough about ash hole, and it needs to be investigated. Well, well yes, uh, like we said we don't know enough, but um, the, uh, the 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 artifacts. I wouldn't be in the uh, standard layers as we look at uh, uh, excavations otherwise. I would say they'd probably be all mixed up so they could be all over the place. They, they, would, be, they would be in the top layers of ash hole, but it, 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 it would be good to see what's going on there, yeah. Mm. It'd, be, it'd be really good. It'd be really good. Um, there we are. Okay, okay Pete, hopefully I've answered, we've answered that one. And um, uh, Margaret, darling. 
talk to us. Uh, I just wondered if the, there was um, a layer above which you wouldn't find any more Ice Age animals like your mammoths and rhinos, hyenas, cave lions. Did they become extinct? What so, about so thirty thousand years ago in the Mesolithic period? No, no, no. You got your date right. Basically, the end of the Paleolithic period is twelve thousand years ago, and they um, and then you got the Mesolithic end in eight thousand five hundred years ago. I believe by about eight thousand five hundred years ago, with the end of the Mesolithic period, is is the point that we've become an island. Um, and within that period, from twelve thousand years ago, which is the end of the Paleolithic period, which we're talking about with the with the decline and the um, the retreat of the ice, which ends the uh, last glaciation period, um, it's within that very tight period um the animals um big fauna start to compete with grasses and trees and they can't really graze and they, and they can't hide and all the rest of it um what, what i mean hide you, you've got when you've got large plains big herds of mammoth can move roam around with with their loads of trees and stuff mammoths can't move around and and they can't go anywhere so therefore that's when they start to become extinct was it about the same time as the neanderthals uh, no, the Neanderthals, um, the problem is the last true blood Neanderthals are, are, are slowly starting to pitter out by about um, 20,000 years ago. This is when, by that point, we've become completely interbred. Um, but um, it, it, it's, ne, ne, so Neanderthals, are, it, that's a difficult one. You put me on the spot for that and you know I'm not going to give you an answer. But uh, what we've got by at least 8,500 years ago, te technically all Irish great elk are extinct in, in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, there's going to be a little while before mammoths are completely extinct off the earth. Um, but in Europe, they would be at that point. Um, huge woolly rhinoceroses are already gone anyway, um, mm -hmm. which would have been less uh, agile as compared with the great sort of elk and, and the mammoth. Mm -hmm. um, and you've got the spotty hyena, which is a bit of a weird one. That's, that's already well gone. Mm, so it was nothing to do with our ancestors that caused their demise. Then it was more climate change. Do you think? Uh, do, 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 do you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fudge both. Oh. Um, I, I'm gonna fudge both because um, what I always say is this, right? Uh, if you've got like two thousand people over the huge landmass of Britain after twelve thousand years ago, and you've got like, like a, um, a million bison and woolly rhinoceroses mm. and all the rest of it. It would take considerable effort for them to hunt out every single beast. Um, it's not possible um, for me. For me, it's it's not possible for us to be blamed completely. Um, yeah, you know, for example, if we if we look at the Plains Indians after um, the 1870s, when 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 the buffalo is, they don't even wipe out the buffalo with with mechanisms. They, they, you know, there's a million buffalo that they that they kill and hunt but we don't kill every single one of them that's with trains that's with um horses and all the rest of it even with all the technology that we've got that the american army put at its disposal to wipe out the buffalo they didn't kill every single one right um so therefore it's not possible to see woolly mam mammoth being wiped out by human beings i do not believe we are responsible for the wiping out woolly mammoths i do not believe that climate change is responsible for the wiping out woolly mammoths what i do believe is is all these factors i believe it sounds daft but i believe that the, the humble tree is what caused the woolly mammoth to become extinct the humble what tree 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 tree, tree. tree. the humble tree because yeah. without that grazing, yeah, that with those sense. without with those trees with yeah. those trees, the mammoths can't graze. Yeah. True. Yeah. Yeah. There's a there's an argument that's around popular at the moment that uh, humans wiped out mammoth in Siberia uh, simply because they're trying to genetically uh, clone uh, a new uh, mammoth with the excuse that it, they need to uh, deforest the area because it's. It's causing climate change. It's causing the yeah. tundra to warm up, yeah. um, and therefore they and they said if they put in mammoth in there, that will get rid of the trees and it will keep the the tundra frozen and keep the carbon dioxide in it. But it's a very tenuous argument. You're thinking it's just just an excuse mm -hmm. to clone a mammoth. But Wasn't that actually think. in the Ukraine? Uh, no, it's Sorry, a bit further yeah. north than that. Yeah, yeah, because I remember those. Um, Great big mammoth homes. That that was in Ukraine, wasn't it? That's right. The, yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. With all the tusks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the, again, again, it's um, it, it's 
it, it's very, you know, that, that what Andy just said. Um, but then again, uh, the mammoths, uh, uh, the, the mammoth, the, the trees need to be gone for the mammoths to be there. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I'm sorry. But well, their 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 argument is that the mammoth will destroy them like the elephants do in Africa, and they do destroy a lot of trees there. Mm. But, right. um, but well, I, my, my, I, it's going to take a lot. They and um, they let slip that it would need about a hundred thousand, and they you know I thinking well you're not going to be able to clone a hundred thousand of them. You know? <laughs> There's not a hundred thousand uh, Indian elephants. No, no the they probably aren't. No. Mm. no so. So, oh, okay, then I think that's everybody other than David, and David has a last laugh as usual. No, oh, I'm fine, thank you. So, David, before David, bye, David. Goes, hopefully, bye we'll bye. see you next week, bye, David. David. Yeah, okay. Take bye care, bye. David. No, no, good to see you. Good to see you. Right. Bye. I think David wants. David's hanging on. I don't know why. He's, <laughs> he's just. He's uh, just right. polite. Yeah. I, I I think he's awfully polite, and he? he's 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 a he's a, he's a man of many stars. Uh, right. So I I got it. Yeah. This sort of yeah. Um. I think that's it, really. So if there's no other questions, we're doing swans come next week. Look out for this email. I'll send it in the next hour. We have the uh, same limestone structure here as 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 Brixham, and, and I'm I'm guessing Kent's Cavern as well. You know where we've got lots of caves with um, great big chambers in them. I mean, a lot of them are filled with water. Part of the year and make actually water systems inside the mount uh, the hills. So, you mean white the, like the White Star caves? Is well, yeah, and the knot. The knot's exactly yeah. the same. Yeah, and and Whit Barrow on the other side is the same. Yeah, yeah. Um, and 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 no doubt the other ones as well because there are lots of caves with, with uh, remains in them on the other side as well. When did they develop that uh, the geological time scale? When did that? Um, yeah, I, 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 yeah. I, um, this your man did his map, wasn't there? But who was that? I can't remember his name. It's very good though. It's in <laughs> color. It's in color. <laughs> <laughs> Just a few stars. Right. Okay. Um, so, so the Devonian period comes directly after um, the carbon. Oh, hang, no, hang on a minute. Do you know what? Right, folks, I made a mistake. The Devonian is before the Carboniferous, so it's older than Carboniferous rock. I do I do um, stand corrected. Um, so so Devonian is much older rock, and it's going to be much more hardier. Yeah, I made a mistake, I do admit. And uh, When's the Mousterian? I always remember that one because I like the name. Oh, uh, the Mousterian, that's, that's, um, that, that's to do with... Um, um, hang on a minute. I, I, I don't use these terms mosteria. Mosteria uh, is, is a cultural is a cultural term for um for tools. Um and yeah, it's a cultural term for tools. Um it, it's uh most, most, I, I don't use it. Mosterian is a period a, a long a long archaeological period dating um from about 150 uh, 160,000 years ago to 40,000 years ago. So yeah. Mosterian tools, big, big, hefty um, hand tools, Mosterian tools. Mm. But if we, um, the, yeah, um, ge if you look at the geological, you know, let's get that answer for the geological table. And then just, um, so obviously we've got the, the archaeological tab table being devised by 1865. Um, and the geological table... There's different geology. There's a completely different geological table in in the United States. Actually, it's got things on it you wouldn't believe. Um, I'm just just having a quick look. I don't actually have the geological table on there, but we do have. The That's the problem with all these tables, though, isn't it? Like we don't have a copper age, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I don't Which understand was... if you could, if you'd call it one. Well, of the those. Bronze Age was a copper age, wasn't it? Yeah, but you added. Um... Yeah, there's a separate Copper Age though in Europe. Oh, so. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. exactly. It's called the Chalcolithic period. Mm. Yeah. So we, we've got um, yes. So Devonian just before the Carboniferous. I was thinking of the Permian period. What makes like, it harder mm. then? Um, it's an older rock. It seems actually weirdly enough, the rock, the the older the rock, it seems it, like the rocks in North Wales that they're, they're much older than anything. The oldest rock, the oldest rocks in Britain are sort of in North Wales and bits of Scotland, and they are so hard. What makes it harder? 
North Cumbria as well. It has to be either pressure or heat. Well, hard. Because it's sedimentary, it's because it was sharp. Now, that well had the dog in EastEnders, we all remember him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any, anyway, anyway, so uh, yeah, it's just old. Um, well, put it this way, Pete, you're old and you're hard, aren't you? Exactly. I'm a hard. Adam, you're getting your candy facts in that yeah, way. Yeah, you're getting your candy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Polish granite is Pete. Yep, well, yes. When I, when I was uh, brought up, we were on Cornish granite. Yeah, Penryn, mm. the Penryn shelf was solid granite. Yeah, Pete, that's Pete. Pete. Pete used to eat it. <laughs> that's why he's the man he is. He, 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 was, he was brought up on it. Do you know what Pete's veins are? Veins are actually uh, calcite. <laughs> actually, we were concerned about radon. Yeah. About radon to be actually breathe in because yeah. of that. Yeah, we have that here. Yeah. Yeah. Is this why I keep going dizzy? Yes. They, oh, they used to test our side, and then God. they decided they weren't going to do it anymore because it costs too much. Oh. God, on, on, on that note, my head's going. Just behind where I was brought up, <laughs> they wild. drilled two and a half miles down into the, uh, into the uh, crust, and uh, that was the geothermal project. Mm. Let's just see if they can actually find a way of actually generating yeah. heat and steam. Yeah. At, uh, through the earth's crust. Mm. Yeah, any Manawath quarry they did that. Any 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 place with limestone can have radon. So, yeah. Well and granite, yeah. Yeah, and granite. Oh yeah, well granite kind of goes yeah, off well, by itself, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It comes off by itself here, by gum. Well that's uh, Sellerfield is built on the only bit of granite in this area. Oh brilliant. Funny that, isn't it? Yeah. Well, <laughs> On Platum, on Platum, there's a big pink boulder, several tons yeah. in weight, and that is a that is a particular granite, fe very feldspar rich granite, which is only found naturally in Anglesey. All oh, mm. right. So yeah. How did it get to Platum? Yeah, that's it's really interesting. Several tons in weight, and it's quite rounded. So we wow. believe it rolled there with the uh, with with the glacier. That's yeah. a long way, isn't it? Age. Yeah. If you listen to the archaeologist Mike Parker Pearson, he would say it was moved over the land, up through the snow yeah. dune, all the way to yeah. the top. It yeah. rolled yeah. down the other side, right? This yeah. is what Mike Parker Pearson would yeah. say. And then it, <laughs> eventually it swam over to Flatome on, on a barge, <laughs> and then, yeah. 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 It wasn't was Stonehenge it? caused by glacial action? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, don't, don't, don't get me started. I'm probably one of the only archaeologists in the country who believes that the stones dropped to stone ends via glaciation, but that's life. All right. There's got to well, be something. They somebody... were on kelp. Yeah, all, all the way, all the way to the top of the bracket. Yep, all the way to the top. Yep. Yeah. All the way to the top. It's rolled off the side then. Well, that's it. If you get to Flatome, it's downhill all the way from there, isn't it? So if you, yeah, it's just, just rolled there. And the, <laughs> and the stones can swim. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. e a oh, e I, actually, 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 didn't they have Chinooks back then that they could actually move them? Uh, can't a Chinook um, yeah. move a tank? Oh yeah, yeah. But the uh, the interesting thing was that Mike P Parker Pearson's argument is based on the fact that they did not, they've not found any remains of boats that are big enough, so therefore they couldn't have taken them by ship. You're thinking that's a bit of a thin argument. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Well, it wouldn't need a boat as such, just enough no. wood to float it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe, maybe it could fly there. Well, there is that. There is the other side, isn't it? The other argument. Yes. Uh, aliens. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> a lot of bladders, Phil. We are. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We've never proved that we're never aliens, have we? Nope. Oh no! Oh, oh, I, 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 oh, could you imagine if John was involved in this big conversation now? So Star Wars starts with isn't it a long, long time ago. Yeah. yeah well, that 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 means that Star but Star Wars is real. Yep. <coughs> Who knows? Who knows? Exactly. Who knows? exactly. Where, where did he get his ideas from? Ah, yeah. Well, yes. When you think of some of the the, the ideas that these people had, 
so many years ago, where did they come from? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did they know about the physics of moving things like these, well, 70 stone uh, capstones they put on the Tinkins Wood? Yeah. And is that that uh, tribe in Africa, isn't it? Found that uh, that uh, map of a solar system that we only just recently discovered the, the stars, yes. all of the stars <laughs> in. Yep. Thinking, they got good eyesight. Mm -hmm. oh. ah. There we are. Strange stuff. Strange stuff. Yep. And, and then it comes to the final thing, right? Cornish people are very different than anywhere else on the planet. Well, of course that's are. true. That's very <laughs> yeah, true. Well, of course we are, yes. It's because they've got <laughs> a black and white flag. I'm beginning to realise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Black and white flag, everything's simple. Yeah. Yeah, ex exactly. <laughs> Don't call, don't call Maybe Pete Simple. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. If there's nothing else tonight, um, uh, we got Pat, Andy, and Anne, and Margaret, and Pete. If there's nothing else, I'm going to call it a day. Okay. <laughs> all right. right. Yeah. So we'll look forward night, everybody. to it. We'll be all year next week. I'm so disappointed, Gina. Good night. Good night. Yep. Good night. See y'all. <laughs> I'll hang on, Carl. Enjoy your next week. Take care. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye all. Bye. Bye. Night, night, folks. Bye. Night, night. Night. Um, the layers. Oh yeah, the layers. Right, the layers. Still there. Yeah, I, I. It's uh, the it is quite possibly agricultural land that we're on. Oh, um, do you want to get this off record? Yeah, yeah. Thank but, you. Okay. Okay. Um, thank, thanks for everybody watching and uh, listening, and uh, on YouTube. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and press the Patreon button. Anyway, thank you very much. And, and the Archaeology Company um, website thingy, I'll stick up as well as I've mentioned that. And thank you very much. Take care. And let's, uh, uh, oh God, let's just finish this. Uh, I haven't looked at the chat box. It was only that one thing. But there, there are calls for the mold cake to be brought back to Wales. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, and then what we'll do, we'll stop the recording somehow. Oh, God, how would you stop this? Bigger oh, hammer. No, hang on. No, hang on. How would you... Uh, that's the thing. How would you stop it? Stop that. Okay. How would you... Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on. If I... If I hang on. If, Hang on. Oh, I want end. Oh, yeah. If you press the live.